good afternoon. I would like to call back to order the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners meeting of July 9th, 2019. I would like to remind everyone, please silence all electronic devices at this time. Um, and first, we have two resolutions. Uh, first resolution, Madam Clerk. Is um, anyone here representing Robert Zahetner? Please step up to the Come podium. Forward. Did I pronounce the last name correct? Zetner. Okay, I will do my best. Zetner. Thank you. Resolution number 19-199, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, honoring private first class Robert L. Zetner for his sacrifice to our country during World War II in the Battle of Tarawa on Betio Island, November 20th, 1943. Whereas Private First Class Robert L. Zetner was born in Cottonwood, Minnesota on July 2nd, 1924. He spent his youth in Redwood Falls along with his parents, Roy and Irene, and younger siblings, Lois, Thomas, and Janan. And whereas the family moved to Pasco County in 1930, where Private First Class Zetner attended Pasco High School in Dade City and was on track to graduate with the class of 1942. And whereas the attack on Pearl Harbor occurred during Private First Class Zetner's senior year, he convinced his parents to allow him to leave high school early to enlist in the Marine Corps in December 16, 1941, nine days after the attack on Pearl Harbor. And whereas, after completing boot camp training with the 6th Recruit Battalion in Paris Island, Private First Class Zetner was assigned to duty with the Marine Barracks at Naval Opera Operating Base Key West. In October of 1942, he traveled to Camp Elliott in San Diego, California, and was assigned to the 6th Replacement Battalion, where the battalion was organized and readied for overseas deployment. After departing the United States in late 1942, he was posted to Company F, 2nd Battalion, 8th Marines in February 1943. ANRAS, on November 20th, 1943, Fox Company was ordered to seize and hold a landing zone designated Red Beach 3 on the island of Betio, Tarawa, where Private First Class Setner was killed in action during the first battle, the first day of battle. And whereas Private First Class Zetner's remains were initially buried in West Division Cemetery in the island of Betio, and in 1948 were moved to the National Memorial Cemetery in Hawaii. Through DNA matching, Private First Class Zetner's remains were identified on June 20th, 2018, and recently returned to the United States, where he now rests at the Florida National Cemetery in Sumner County. And Raz, our community has a continuing sense of gratitude to those who have given so much in the defense of the freedoms which we all continue to enjoy. We owe a great debt to those who have served in the defense of this nation and will perpetually honor Private First Class Zetner's sacrifice by adding his name to the Pasco County World War II Memorial in Dade City. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, that said board hereby honors Private First Class Robert L. Zetner and his family for their dedication and sacrifice to our country. Done and resolved in regular session with a quorum present and voting this ninth day of July 2019. Move for approval. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Welcome, Ms. Smith. Ms. Smith is um, Robert Zetner's sister and she was four years old when this took place and when he joined the service but six. we've got oh, six. Yeah. right and we're so thankful for what he did he paid the ultimate price but we all have freedom here today because of him and many many more that paid that price for our our freedom so so grateful i have two uncles and a and a father that's on that same memorial and so everybody knows we've already placed the name on the memorial and we went out and looked at that before the meeting started. So, Ms. Smith, would you like to say something if you would step to the podium there, pull that mic down to you. I just want to thank you for watching out for our veterans. There's, uh, there's so many of them that need help and uh, it's just wonderful that somebody cares for them like you do. I just uh, I'm thankful to everybody. <laughs> then I start crying. Don't we? <laughs> okay. Well, it's very it's a it's a nice day and it's a good day to cry. So don't worry about that. So, 
but we certainly uh, glad we worked out things because there was confusion on where where he was uh, where he was living at the time because his address said Brooksville. So it was very confusing to try to work that out. But in fact, back in the day, uh, the addresses for Brooksville, because of zip codes, and we know about that with Hillsborough yeah. County, yep. that uh, zip code sometimes throws an address over into Pasco County, and we figured that out. And we already placed his name on, on the memorial out there. And, um, he's, he's in that list of mis was missing in action until they did find him. And uh, thank goodness they recovered him and brought him back. So that's great. So we, we certainly appreciate his sacrifice and, and your family's sacrifice and allowing, especially your parents, and allowing him to join up when he did. I know after Pearl Harbor is how we ended up being in the World War II. We were allies to others, but how we got into it is when Japanese uh, bombed Pearl Harbor at that time, and we, we got it. And back then, I'm sure they started a draft or maybe thought about one, but most people joined because they wanted to go and, and fight for their country. And he was one of those. So, I and we appreciate it. Right, after Pearl right. that's days. right. So that's what got a lot of them to join up the service back in that day. So it's so much appreciated his, his giving of the ultimate price for our freedom. We'll all come down and join you, and we'll take a picture. Resolution 2. Dr. Steve Spena, could you please come to the podium? And anybody supporting him? And if any of your <laughs> team is here as well, they can come up to the podium. Tell them all to come up. Come on up. Don't be bashful. Come on. <laughs> resolution number 19 198, mm -hmm. a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, expressing appreciation to Dr. Steve Spena, retired city manager for the city of Zephyr Hills for his 32 years of service to the citizens of Pasco County. Whereas Dr. Steve Spena began his career in service to the public working as a reporter and later became editor of the Zephyr Hills News, where he remained until 1987. And whereas in 1987, Dr. Spina started working for the city of Zephyr Hills in the planning department. Then in 1996, he took on the role of the acting city manager. After four months, the city council promoted Dr. Spina as city manager for the city of Zephyr Hills. And whereas during his tenure as at the city of Zephyr Hills, he helped shape and define Zephyr Hills by working to save and preserve many of the community's historic treasures, including the historic train depot, which is now a museum, showcasing the history of the city. And Raz Dr. Spina served as a founding member, uh, member of the Main Street Zephyr Hills, Inc., an organization that works to preserve and enhance the downtown area of the city of Zephyr Hills. And Raz, Dr. Spina was instrumental in the formation of the Zephyr Hills Economic Development Committee, together with the development of numerous pro programs and projects, 
which continue to enrich the lives of the citizens of Zephyr Hills. ANRAS Dr. Spina's dedication to the public administration profession has been exemplified through his work as adjunct professor at the University of South Florida and through his contributions to professional organizations such as the Florida League of Cities, the Florida City and County Management Association, and the American Society for Public Administration Suncoast Chapter. And Raz Dr. Spina's defining focus has been building cooperative relationships and partnerships with the state of Florida, Pasco County, Chambers of Commerce, and their regional municipalities. And Raz, after 32 years of dedicated service, the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners congratulates Dr. Spina on his retirement from the city of Zephyr Hills and wishes him the best in all future endeavors. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, that said board hereby expresses appreciation to Dr. Steve Spena, retired city manager from, for the city of Zephyr Hills, for his 32 years of service to the citizens of Pasco County. Done and resolved in regular session with a quorum present and voting this ninth day of July, 2019. Move approval. Second. Got a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Second. Second. Welcome, Dr. Spena. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate this recognition and it's been an a honor to you know, work for the citizens of Zephyr Hills and Pasco County these past uh, years. It's also been a, a privilege to work with Pasco County and uh, on numerous projects that we've, we've completed over the years. And I know uh, the city will continue in that uh, format. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Just say a couple words. Mr. Uh, Dr. Spinner, you've been amazing to work with. Uh, your passion for the city has been incredible. And I think it's great, just like today, fitting day, that we uh, open up State Road 56, uh, going all the way to 301. So your leadership for the city has been phenomenal every step of the way. You've got a great council to work with as well, and now a, a great replacement that you've groomed. So uh, I expect more great things coming from Zephyr Hill. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We know you're not retiring. You just, yeah, you can't doing retire. Something different, right? I'll be do. Uh, right now I'm retired, but I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 do, <laughs> I'll I'll find something to do down the road. Well, you can only retire a couple, three times, you know. Just once. <laughs> You're only on two, so you right, can come I'm back. Right, I'm on two. <laughs> so, Thank you very I've much. I've certainly uh, enjoyed working with you over the years. I mean, even before I became here, just as a commissioner, years and years in the past as a business person working with you, it's always been a pleasure, and, and you've done a great job at Zephyr Hills, and we're so appreciative of what you've done there. And, uh, you take care of a lot of our citizens there in that, that area that... Uh, we, we appreciate and we, we take care of them ourselves. So your citizens were our citizens, so we all work close together on that. So. All right. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Okay. If you want to, let's all join down below and we'll take a picture. Proceed with the uh, public hearing agenda, starting with P1 ordinances. And okay, so P1 publication was in the Tampa Bay Times on June 21st, 2019. Okay. Good afternoon, Commissioners Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. Item P1 is PDD 19 1104. This is a large scale comprehensive plan amendment for Grand Oaks. This is a continuance item, so it's a request for continuance the August 6th. 2019 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Dade City. Move to continue. Yes, we got to take. Okay. We don't have to do that. Oh, second. 
Okay, I got a motion and a second to continuance. The time certain. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passed. P2. P2 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on April 26, 2019. Erica Winland's Planning and Development. Item P2, PDD 19-0874, is a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment in the name of CPAL 1906, Myth 54, sub-area. This is the yeah. adoption hearing, so we'll begin by reading the ordinance title into record. An ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan, providing for a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2-15 and sheet 20, changing from res 12, residential 12 dwelling units per gross acre, com commercial, office, off office, and con conservation lands to PD plan development on approximately 164.8 acres of real property located on the south side of State Road 54, approximately 2,000 feet east of Meadowbrook Drive, and a text amendment to the subarea policy flu 7.1.9 Smith 54 subarea, and a map amendment to the future land use maps 2-99 Smith 54 sub area, providing for a repealer, repealer severability and an effective date. On May 9, 2019, the LPA held a public hearing on the proposed comprehensive plan amendment and recommended approval to the Board of County Commissioners. On May 21, 2019, the BCC held a public hearing on the proposed large-scale comprehensive plan amendment and authorized transmittal to the Department of Economic Opportunity and other reviewing agency. Uh, DEO received the transmittal package for expedited review and there were no objections on the proposed amendment. Yeah, I'm trying to go back and it's going the other way. Yeah. The subject property is located in the South Market area on the south side of State Road 54, approximately 2,000 feet east of Moto Book Drive. The subject property is surrounded by the shops of Valente Village to the north, single family residential to the south and west, Long Lake Ranch office uses, and the Pasco County proposed school site is located to the east. Here's an inset map representing the proposed flu plan development, which is consistent with the comprehensive plan as it is intended to create a flexible mixed use project that will encourage opportunities for different types of housing, convenient shopping, recreation, and create a walkable <coughs> community. This, uh, the comprehensive plan is also consistent with policy flu 1.6.1 commercial development. The proposed project is consistent as a commercial development is permitted in development that occurs within the PD flu. The Smith 54 sub area proposes a pedestrian scale network to provide convenient and safe access between a mix of uses. The proposed mixed use development is consistent with policies identified within the comprehensive plan. <coughs> and with that, planning and development recommends the Board of County Commissioners to find the amendment consistent with the comprehensive plan and adopt the proposed amendment by roll call vote. Thank you. Okay, this is a public hearing. This is not county initiated, so you're taking the applicant first. Okay. Uh, developer applicant, Mr. Tool. Name and address, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Oakley. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joel Two, Two and Associates, Palm Harbor, Florida, and I am land use counsel for the applicant, and I am working on this matter with Height Design as the planning firm and Bowler Engineering as the civil engineers. Uh, just a real brief uh, summary uh, to amplify uh, staff's comments. Um, it's important to note, uh, because it wasn't referenced, this is an existing approved project. Uh, this project was approved in 2012. Um, it was approved in a different format. There was a plan amendment and an MPUD, but that plan amendment significantly had a substantial area of R12, uh, multifamily, um, and then the mixed-use commercial office in the front. Um, that existing plan amendment 
which what we have approved today actually called out probably much to the chagrin of many of you today, it called out for 1,534 apartments. Mm -hmm. um, the residential entitlement that exists today, that can be built today, if we don't change the plan category, is 1,534 apartments. So this is a plan amendment that we brought forward hoping you would embrace because we've been listening to what we've heard. We're keeping all of the retail and office entitlements so that we can still do the office, the employment generating um, uses in the front. We are converting and reducing the residential entitlement all the way from 1,534 down to a maximum of 700. And then even within that, we're limiting the apartments to a cap of 400. So we're going to do a single family detached pod we're going to do a townhouse pod and only one apartment parcel. So the apartments are going to be barely 25% of what is approved today. The good thing about the plan amendment is it locks in those new entitlements. If you approve the plan amendment, then you are now limiting this property to only the 400 multifamily with the single family, the townhomes, and yet you still keep the employment generating uses. Now, we are in the South Market area. We're in the urban service area. This is exactly the type of project that your plan calls for. Staff has done a good job of negotiating and updating. If you look at the plan amendment, the sub-area policies actually dictate exactly the form of this development. It, it has to look a certain way. The retail and office has to be integrated. The residential has to be integrated with trails and sidewalks and connectivity to the community gathering space. We are doing a compact development area meeting mudroom guidelines for that central core and we're integrating all this together. So this project in a nutshell gets rid of, uh, of uh, over a thousand multifamily units that are approved today and can be built today while still preserving for you the employment generating mixed use concept that, that we want in the South Market area. <clears throat> it's been recommended for approval by staff. It was recommended by your planning commission sitting as your local planning agency. It went to DEO and came back with no objection, no comments. Um, and so in our view, we urge you to approve the plan amendment. We'll get to the MQD zoning later, which simply tracks the new uh, it, con it's, it conforms to the new plan amendment, the same exact entitlements. Um, so we have specific design requirements. Uh, one thing of note is from when this P MQD was originally approved in the, in the plan area, the school board went ahead, when this project wasn't developed previously, it went ahead and purchased the school site. So we have worked out with the school district. Uh, we are accommodating the access they need. We're accommodating the utilities they need and coordinating that with them. So our site plan is dovetailed and they've signed off on what we're doing with the plan amendment and the MPUD as, as keeping them happy that they're in good shape with this future school site, which they already own, which is right between this project and Long Lake Ranch. Both are gonna be connected with a pedestrian trail and, and, and walkway to get the kids to and from that school without going on 54. So that's where we are. Uh, I'm going to mention this in advance because you're going to hear it. You heard a brief reference at your transmittal hearing to the drainage concerns that the adjacent subdivision has. I'm prepared to address that later, but th the point there is, as you well know, we're at the entitlement stage today. We're simply doing a plan amendment and an MPUD modification to conform to the new plan amendment. My client has reached out to the neighborhood. Bowler Engineering has reached out to them. We have told them that as we now go forward with Swift Mud and your county engineering staff on the drainage plans, Bowler will come have a charrette. They'll go to the community and do it there. They'll do it here with your staff. However they want to engage in that drainage plan review and permitting process, my client's good with that. And Bowler has already reached out to them and will continue to make that offer. So no one is trying to cut anyone out of the process. The point is we aren't, we aren't to that process yet. That process doesn't happen unless and until we get the plan amendment. Otherwise, we have to go engineer a site to build 1,534 apartments and build what we have. Uh, so we need the approval to know what it is the project is to be 
so that they can continue the engineering plans for that new project. But we will absolutely reach out and engage them in that process. And you all know, swift mud is tough. They're not going to approve drainage plans, plans in this new day and age that they're not happy with. And these residents have the right, as you know, to intervene in that permitting process. If they don't think the job's being done, uh, they can intervene in that. So that, that's where we are today. We, um, we request that you uh, approve, finally adopt the plan amendment, and then, of course, we'll address the MQD later. But there's really not much there that's different from what I've said. Thank you. We're happy to answer. If you, well, I have, I if you want to get into too. questions, we're happy to do that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And, and I may need staff, too. Um, okay, Joel. So initially 1,534 apartments. You're bringing it down to... 400. 400. 400. All right. Okay. Single family. We're going to have uh, 150 single family detached maximum and 150 townhomes, townhomes. maximum. Okay. Originally, okay, so you're 600. So now you're at 1,000. You're at 1,534 apartments. How many single family homes previously? The none. Last there was none. So it was 100 percent apartments. Apartments. Oh, right. Well, I mean, it comes to nobody's surprise of my. I'm shocked. This taste for, you're shocked, for apartments. So I do like seeing that go down. I think it is important to note, obviously, today, you know, because of prior approvals, that it could be built with 1,534 apartments. That's a lot How, of apartments. That's a lot of apartments. Okay. Yeah, that concerns me. Okay. Um, so I'm glad that's, I'm glad that's changing. Um, yeah, it's like a university. That's a good point. Um, so I know you're not to the point yet, um, but are you th commercial, retail, 54 frontage? Yes, sir. Okay. We actually have a concept plan that you will see in the MPUD presentation. They actually have a conceptual layout that's been part of the review. We will see that. That you'll be very happy that has the retail and the office integrated on the front. It has mm -hmm. the community gathering area, and then it has the apartments back behind that, but sharing that community gathering area. Okay. So you have, you have a layer of retail, a layer of office. The, the one apartment parcel is three layers back. Three layers back? Wait, okay. Three layers back, and then you have a single family pod in the back, which Lennar is doing, and you have a townhome pod in the back, which I believe Lennar is also doing. Um, so, I mean, this thing is pretty much, it, you're going to get exactly what we're asking you to approve. So this isn't kind of like last time where they're just throwing entitlements. I mean, they have specific contracts to contingent only on this approval for every one of those. And the apartment project you're getting is, is a luxury, highly amenitized market rent from a, a, a very quality project that's coming in. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ms. Starkey. Hi. And I, I see I have a lot of my constituents here from Sierra Pines. Yes. And I, I know a lot of them because I meet with many of them regularly because, um, as many of you know, Sierra Pines is one of our older developments that was built before we had any swift mud oversight or um, storm water oversight. So uh, we've been peeling away the layers of um, challenges in the Sierra Pines. And I want you to know you're represented um, by Jesse, who's doing a fabulous job. And, um, and so we, we meet regularly with um, staff and the Sierra Pines Coalition. And we will um, be meeting with all of you again when the time is right, when the county has looked at their plans and Swiftland has looked at the plans um, and they get all their, um, their engineering ducks in a row. Um, and then we will meet with the community and we can have more than one meeting if it's necessary. We'll, we won't do it here, we'll do it on our side, um, either somewhere in your community or at the county, um, <coughs> county offices, but just rest assured you'll have your opportunity to um, be comfortable with what's going on. They're, they're, the county does not allow developments to um, have adverse effects on neighboring developments, and I'm sure Swiftman has that, that rule too. So, um, so we'll, we can talk about the hydrology of Sierra Pines and, and why you have some of the challenges that you do at that meeting, I think would be more appropriate. But um, I appreciate that you've downsized this and I'm excited that it's Mutterum. We don't see too many of those. And, um, and I'm glad that you're connecting to the neighborhood next to you so that they don't have to go out on 54. Those are all things that we, we um, really like. So I think we're going to hear from some Sierra Pines people. But um, anyway, I'm, I look forward okay. to the community meeting. And rest assured, you have the ear of your commissioner.
Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes. a reminder to the board, P2 is your future land use amendment, and it's taking it from, as Mr. Tu and staff has, has told you, individualized future land use classifications to PD and making limitations on what can be built there. This is not the site plan. This is the overarching policy um, of your of your comprehensive plan. The the site plan zoning issues are later on in your agenda under the MPUD. Yeah. Okay. This is a public Thank hearing. And, um, uh, uh, may I ask a question? One more question. So if um, we know that the residents want to speak to the uh, flooding concerns and stormwater concerns. Are they allowed to speak at both, both, or what's, what's a better form for them to have their voices heard today? So, the, the, both of these are public hearings. So, but, and they can express their desires on, in either, either one of these. My, my concern is that P2 is really, as I said, is the broad overarching land use amendment it is not, and it's decreasing in intensity, so I'm not sure that drainage concerns would really be relevant to, to P2. Um, so if but they wanted I, to have a say, hold it for But more they can, the they, they are both public hearings, and I'm not gonna say that they, they can't speak right. to, to one item or another. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is a public hearing, and we have uh, people signed up for P2, and our clerk will read out the names, and if you'll line up behind, and once you come to the podium to speak, please state your name and your address for the clerk. All right, the first person signed up for P2 is Jess, is it Stempine? I thought we were lining up and then talking, sorry. Hello, I'm Jessica Stempian. I live at 1102 Wildwood Lane. I grew up on Woodfield Court and we wanted to come voice our concerns and go on record today. I am here on behalf of our Sierra Pines Coalition in which we have been working since 2015 with the county, with the Water Management District, with the Department of Environmental Protection to work on our stormwater and flooding issues. And we've had a lot of success, right? We got the Sun Coast cleared out. We got the Sandy Branch Tributary Canal cleared out, we got an exemption for some areas in our neighborhood to do maintenance on, but we are highly concerned about this development. So we just wanted to go on record with some of those concerns. We're concerned that it's going to increase the intensity and the duration of the stormwater events in our neighborhood. We're also concerned that the PACE model has not been updated and that the Anclo East Watershed Management Plan has not been completed. We would like to see resources devoted to that to assist our neighborhood. We're also concerned that South and Sandy Ranch tributaries are obstructed and not flowing in some areas. We've also noted that there is a discrepancy between the wetland impacts that are shown on the Smith 54 input plan, which is 1.8, and the plans that the Army Corps has sent out to residents, which show a 5.18 acre wetland being filled in. So we're concerned about those discrepancies and we would like those addressed. And we just don't want to be a drain on the county resources with the Emergency Management Services Division having to react to our stormwater and our flooding issues. We would really like to work cooperatively with you all like we have been. And so we would like to propose for a delay or a slow, you know, slowing down of this process so that we can get and have a third party reviewer, an engineer, an advocate, an expert on our side when we sit down with those developers we're just asking for time and transparency into this process. So we know that we live in a floodplain, but we're just, we're just asking that you work cooperatively with us like we have been working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Next person signed up is Nadine Ferguson. Following Nadine is Joan Riddle. Hi, my name is Nadine Ferguson. I live at 17550 Cedarwood Loop. Um, I'm going to take a little, I'm not going to go about the um, flooding just yet. I'll wait for the next session for that. But I kind of have an issue in be a good neighbor. 
um, this proposed build of 1,500 apartments, which I took as a threat. I didn't really appreciate it, I'm gonna be frank. Um, telling me you're gonna reduce it to 400, which I think is abysmal still. Where are all these people gonna park? Are you gonna cement over the entire lot, including the floodplains? I don't understand how this works. So I'm saying as a good neighbor. The original plan called for conservation land. I see none in the current built plan. Where are all these animals going to go? We're used to wildlife where we live. We love where we live. I'm asking you, please don't allow them to ruin what makes Pasco County so great. Don't take away what makes us unique. We already have an Orlando where they've cemented over everything. And honestly, I don't want to live there. I'm, I'm just saying I think they need to be better neighbors. If they've reached out to the school district, they probably had to. They have not reached out to us. I am directly adjacent to the bill plan. All I've gotten is three letters. I've heard from no one. I've called their offices. They don't seem to know who's in charge of the project. Nobody can put me in touch with anyone. I've had to call county officials. I did reach out to you, and I do appreciate I was really surprised how quickly you got back to me. I really appreciated that, seriously. But I would just say, be good neighbors. Don't threaten me with the number of apartments. I assume that was approved before the large apartment buildings were built across the street from us. I don't think there's a need for 1,500 more apartments, but if you think you can sell them, by all means. And in my mind, if you have 1,500 apartments, you'd be going upward and you'd have density and you wouldn't be sprawling this across the entire 168 acres. We might have less of a flooding issue if you did that. I don't know. I don't like the plans that you have right now. I don't feel that they have been worked out with us. I don't feel there's any conservation land. There's nowhere for the animals to go, but except the roads, you know. My time's up. Thank you. Well, you have one more minute. You have another minute. Oh, I do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't Just see that. Just letting you know you have one <laughs> Do you see the yellow light on no, your Oh, side? I see it now. Yeah. All I ask is <laughs> let's balance progress with the way of life that we enjoy. Be good neighbors. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Joan Riddle, followed by Kevin Marks. Hi, my name is Joan Riddle. I live at 17535 Wellfield Court. Um, Ms. Starkey has gotten numerous emails from me in regards to the flooding. This is just a quick visual on what we are dealing with. To the south, we now have all those Hillsborough County schools. We have Villa Rosa, Fern Glen, and Heritage Harbor. To the north, we have the elevated 54. We have Bexley. We have Suncoast Metal, and we have Ballantrae. To the west, which is the direction our water is supposed to flow, we have Sun Coast. We also now have North Point. We also have Flight Simulator School. We also have Mettler Toledo, who, by the way, were called because they were not using the correct engineering plans and we were getting more water. Now there's another building going up just past Mettler Toledo. And now we have all those apartments right behind us. Since all of this has happened, and Ms. Starkey knows, we have lived through the 100-year rain event, and we had flooding, and like Jess said, we know we're in a floodplain, and that's okay. But that 100-year flood, that water was gone within three to four days. Two years ago, Irma gave us eight and a half inches of rain. Our road was under a foot and a half of water for over two weeks. We could not get emergency services. We could not get mail. We could not get trash. Ms. Starkey was kind enough after we sent an email that said, look, we have trash piling up for almost a week and a half. We have buzzards here. This is a health hazard. What can we do? That's the problem. The water is building up. It takes more and more water build up around our neighborhood before it flows because the flow is not going west to the south at Sandy Branch as it's supposed to. It's being delayed and the elevation is rising so it's taking more water before it flows. And because of that now, our roads are starting to deteriorate, they're starting to crumble. It puts everyone in our neighborhood at a safety risk. We have many people that rely on visiting nurses, hospice, and other medical care. They can't get there when there's a foot and a half of water on the roads. And everyone knows this. But yet you still allow the last of our green space to the east to be taken up by nothing but concrete 
and asphalt. Where is that water going to go? It's going to head our direction. It's going to get higher. And we are going to be under more and more water. And again, like Ms. Ferguson said, we moved there because we enjoy the wildlife. We love seeing them. We love the river otters. But I don't want anybody else's water. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Up next is Kevin Marks, followed by Ray, or I'm sorry, Wade Broxton. Hey there. <laughs> My name is Kevin Marks. I live at 1530 Woodfield Court. It's a southwest area of Sierra Pines, about the tail end of a lot of the water that comes out of there. I've been here in Tampa area, Odessa, for about 40 years and watched this area grow up here. I've been in the Sierra Pines for 20 years. And I can see my area where my daughter had a playhouse. Now it's under two foot of water in the last 16 years. It just accumulates more and more every year. My shop is underwater now every year from the rains. I have issues, my issues are still concerned with Mettler Toledo coming in there. It's made it twice as bad that it has been ever. The, um, I talked to Swift Mud, guaranteed from Swift Mud that everything will be worked out. They won't get a CO till everything is fixed. Nothing ever got fixed. It's all changing the flow of the streams, the creeks, and flooding everything in my area of my house. I uh, can't park in my car park or in my car area. I have to barricade with dirt around there so it doesn't flood my house. And it just gets worse every year. And I think that we need to fix the issues before we create any more issues. And the county and Swift Mud can say whatever they want about 99% of that and he just goes in one ear and out the other anymore because everything they promised has never happened and I'm just tired of living in the water and I don't want any more. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, sir. Reed Bruxton, followed by Charles Hoffman. Good afternoon, my name's Wade Broxton. I live at 17420 Cedarwood Loop. I've lived there for 20 years. And every year, they build something new. Our house gets more and more water because I live on the creek. Even through all the floods. We could not get hospice in in 2015 for a lady that was dying, dying because everything that they built to the east of us, to the west of us, it keeps flooding us out. In the driest times, the creek behind my house used to be so dry you could go back there and clean it out. Hadn't been dry in almost two years. And it's really, really getting old having that much water. And to Mr. Two, I'd like to know what ghost neighborhood he's talking to because it surely isn't any of us because I'm right there with Jess and we've never been contacted by anybody. So he either got the wrong number to the wrong neighborhood or something because he's sure not talking to us and we would like for him to talk to us if he'd like to get this done, but it's just not happening. And I'm really concerned about fire vehicles and hospice and everything else. I mean, maybe y'all could create a stormwater sewage for our neighborhood, you know, drainage to help it get out, you know, Y'all gonna have to do something to help us out. We built this nice spread for a retirement, and now, you know, if it floods, and then we can't bring in dirt, that's not right either. But that's all I gotta say. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Charles Hoffman, followed by Lisa Sloan. Yes, Good sir. afternoon, Charles Hoffman. I live at 17340 Meadowbrook. My property directly backs up to this project. My property also has one of the largest drainage ditches that moves from the Bayhead into the Anklote Basin along 54. 
Over the years, with the rising of 54, oh, also, I've lived in Pasco County for over 50 years, so I've seen it all. Um, but that rising basin with 54 elevation has stopped that water flow. We have water right now if you drive through the neighborhood, which it shouldn't be there. So with the water, I think everybody's going to address the same thing. The engineering plan that we've seen that has been mailed to us, if that's what they're talking about reaching out to us, it's not good. The residents, that's, we've all lived out here long enough to know that when they try to develop this at this print, it's going to fail. You're pushing the water on top of us. And with that being said, the apartment complex, I hate, I don't want to use any names, but don't come in and threaten us with more apartments. We know you're already killing our property values. County, Pasco County doesn't care about our property values in Sierra Pines or Meadowbrook. You guys have proven that to us with every development along 54. You've destroyed us. Thank you. We've all planned to live there for retirement, and you've basically pushed so many residents out of the Pasco County. You sitting here don't realize this. Talk to your neighbors. We talk to our neighbors all the time. They want to leave. They don't want to pay your taxes anymore. They don't want your representation. You've failed us as a county. If you let this development go through, it's going to go through. We're going to have development. We understand that. But please find the engineering support to make this 165 acres self-supportive of its own drain water, its own infrastructure. Our infrastructure is broken. You guys have not helped us fix it. The patches that you've put on it is not a fix. It's a patch. You continue to give us bits and pieces like we're children and you're just killing us. You're just going to lose more taxpayers. Our property values are going down, and you're not going to help us with that either. So these plans that they keep sending out, please have Swift Mud, have Pasco County make this a better project than what you've done in the past, because everything around us right now is horrible. So please enforce them to reach out and to have this discussion with us. Thank you. Thank you. We have nine more people to speak on this, so if we could have a couple lined up behind. Um, this is uh, Lisa Sloan. We have next Sean Duran, followed by Scott Fitzpatrick. If you could line up behind Ms. Sloan, please. Or not. <laughs> and what's your okay. name? Sean Duran. Sean Duran, thank right. you. Go ahead. You're Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Adamanelli Sloan, and I live at 17135 Gunlock Road with my husband, Scott Sloan, and family. And I work at the Tampa VA where I serve America's veterans with spinal cord injuries. I want to commend the board for recognizing a veteran at the beginning of this uh, meeting, and I'm glad that I was able to attend to, to hear that. Um, how, how fitting that it's on the other side of Fourth of July for us to be able to do that together. Um, I would like to come to you and ask that you preserve our freedom to work and live where we work and live now and not let it deteriorate any further. Um, I'll save my comments um, in detail on the drainage. They echo those of my neighbors. But I'm also concerned about congestion and my ability to get to and from work in a timely fashion on an everyday basis. And I'm concerned about my ability to get work, to work at all serving America's veterans at the James A. Haley VA after flooding events. And it, let me just also state, it doesn't take a major hurricane for our neighborhood to flood. But after Hurricane Irma, which was described earlier and some of its impact, I had to call into work and say, I'm sorry, I cannot drive my vehicle to the hospital. I won't be there today. I don't like having to do that. I, I like the job that I do and I want to be able to do it when I need to do it. I don't want to be trapped in my neighborhood. I love my neighborhood, but I need to be able to leave my neighborhood. We moved to Texas because I brought an $11 million grant to help America's veterans with spinal cord injury go back to work in Tampa and around the nation, but it made Tampa the hub of it. And our family chose Pasco County because we wanted those open spaces, those vibrant places. With the building of Mettler Toledo and every additional development that has come since then, those have deteriorated substantially. When I tell people I, work, I, I live off of 54, there's an audible sigh. You can see the sympathy in their eyes that you have to travel this road that has become almost unbearable. 
So it's not just flooding, it's congestion and quality of life that needs to be thought about here too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Scott Fitzpatrick, followed by Jessica Greer. If you could line up behind Mr. Fitzpatrick. Good afternoon. I thank you for this opportunity to be before you. It's an honor to address you today. My name is Scott Fitzpatrick. I'm with Owens Law Group, and I'm at 811 Cypress Village Boulevard, Ruskin, Florida, 33573. And I have the, the honor of representing 68 <coughs> concerned owners of real property located in Sierra Pines and Meadowbrook Estate subdivisions. Based upon our review of documents and information provided to us by our clients, it appears that the proposed development of Cypress Ranch, which I'll, how I ref, I'll refer to the site at issue here, will likely cause our clients to suffer severe economic damages. The elevation of Sierra Pines and Meadowbrook Estates is generally lower than that of Cypress Ranch. Given the natural slope of Cypress Ranch, Sierra Pines, and Meadowbrook Estates, water runoff drains from Cypress Ranch onto Sierra Pines and Meadowbrook Estates. Additionally, our clients have the following concerns. One, the removal of five acres of wetlands in Cypress Ranch will reduce storage and impact wildlife. Two, our clients understand that Cypress Ranch is claiming, A, the soil within Cypress Ranch will infiltrate more water than that which will run off onto adjoining lands. And B, has a seasonal high water table that is three foot or greater. If this is the case, we would like to see the evidence which supports the same. We don't think it is. Three, the infrastructure plan does not appear to use an updated model for storm, storm water drain, drain off. Four, there is a discrepancy between the buffer used for this development and North Point, which is at the end of Bridal Path Court. Cypress Ranch is using a 15-foot buffer between townhomes and, and my client's properties, and North Point has at least a 100-foot buffer. It's a big difference. Five, the infrastructure plan does not take into account that South Branch and Sandy Branch tributaries are obstructed in some areas and not flowing. And six, the impact of additional stormwater and potential flooding could be a public safety issue with flooding roads and limited access in and out of the Sierra Pines and Meadowbrook Estates neighborhoods. Upon our belief, the proposed Cypress Ranch will alter the natural flow of its runoff into Sierra Pines and Meadowbrook Estate and cause these damages. Um, we are asking you, we are begging you to delay taking action in regards to Cypress Ranch development until our clients' concerns are addressed and their engineers and advocates are given a fair opportunity to weigh in on the development efforts on the Sierra Pines and Meadowbrook Estates community. And I thank you greatly for your time this afternoon. Thank you. <clears throat> Behind Ms. Greer is Scott Stone. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Dr. Jessica Megan Greer. Um, I'm an OBGYN in Tampa area, just south of Lutz. I have um, some maps. Am I allowed to give these to you guys? Move to receive and file. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Give the clerk. Aye. Clerk. 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 <laughs> 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 Got a comment. Got a vote? Right one. Okay. Yeah, All those um, in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Say so that already? <laughs> All right, fast. Okay. So, um, uh, we don't I. Have this. Pardon? We don't have this. Okay. Well, perfect. Um, so, my name's uh, Dr. Greer. I live at 17324 Raintree. Um, I bought my husband and I. Um, he's a physician assistant that's currently on call at the hospital, hence, I have un unable to. Um, come to these meetings because I've had to take a half day off clinic and actually off call to be here in the middle of the day. Um, so I currently bought two lots, um, me and my husband, 2.5 acres with the hopes of this being my forever home. Um, when we bought the lots there, which I marked on the, um, the plan for development, we were told that um, there would be a wildlife corridor right behind us. And per the prior approved plans, um, we were told that area would be 100 to 150 feet with um, a corridor to protect the wildlife going between the lands. We actually um, attempted to buy the property behind us. We wanted to buy a buffer of at least 10 acres. When we contacted the, um, the uh, uh, real estate 
um, agent. We were told that it was, quote, high dollar land and for apartments and townhomes, and that he quoted as 50, uh, sorry, $500,000 an acre. Um, and he told us no concerns that the approved project would have at least 100 to 150 feet behind our house, our property line, which we spent over a, a half a million dollars on. Um, since we have moved in, um, my big concerns, we have flooding, which I'll talk about later in the P18 section, but currently um, I have uh, received this plan, that's from the Army Corps of Engineer, and you can see our house and my neighbor, um, the Kennedy's house marked on there, and um, it shows uh, townhomes in my backyard that are two stories, um, and they have been proposed only a 15 feet barrier from my property line to the townhomes. This not only impacts the value of my house, um, but also impacts flooding great not to mention the wildlife. Um, and it's a shame to see Pasco County going toward, I understand development needs to happen, but um, you know, you guys pride yourself in protecting land and having a wildlife corridor and protecting um, endangered species that are back there. Um, the Florida, the Army Corps of Engineer have outlined how they're going to remove gopher tortoises, indigo snakes, and have outlined that given to the, um, the residents but they really haven't addressed anything um, with the flooding um, concerns, and not to mention um, you know, the impact on our land with having 15 feet um, between our property line and um, the townhomes. So I'm ashamed to say, sitting before you today. Sorry, I'll talk What's again. Your comment? <laughs> All right, Mr. Scott Stone, followed by Dennis Knight. Good afternoon, my name is Scott Sloan. Um, I live uh, at 17135 Gunlock Road with my wife, Lisa, who spoke earlier. Um, I echo a lot of the sentiments that are, have already been presented. Um, we bought property as a dream. It was a dream of ours. And year after year, that dream has eroded away because the water that flows into uh, our residences erodes our property. It takes away any chance to, I mean, our whole uh, um, area is overgrown. It's overgrown because we can't take care of stuff anymore. The waterways don't move. The water simply comes through all the paths into my pond and then it floods because I have no outlet from that point. I object to all the plans, whichever one that they decide to go with, the 1,500 apartments or the uh, uh, other plan that the lawyer spoke about earlier. It, I can almost say that Long Lake Ranch doesn't need any uh, uh, reservoir ponds, that Villa Rosa doesn't need any reservoir ponds because that's what we've become. It's everybody's reservoir pond. Thank you. Followed by Mr. Dennis Knight is Diane there's no end. I'm Dennis oh, Kite. Left. Um, so we just line, if we get everybody, get everybody to line up. Okay. There's uh, three left after Mr. Yeah, Knight. Everybody, everybody so, um, I don't know the names. Um, the Justice Sierra Pines Development, PK Base 28 at hotmail.com. Okay, so if there's anybody else that's wanting to speak, please line up behind and the. Um, Amanda Grayson. Lady in the purple. Anybody else? Amanda Grayson signed up. Okay. And then I don't, there's, that's all that signed up. Okay. Okay, my name is Dennis Kite. There's no N in my name. Okay. Um, I live at 17234 Eagle Lane. I've been there almost 30 years. I've been a resident of Pasco County for 76 years. So I guess I'm senior, wow. senior resident here today. Um, I live, um, Everybody's uh, talked about the uh, Heritage Harbor and all the other things. I live on Eagle Lane, which is, was affected by Villa Rosa when they built that. We argued about that building, and we were told that 
that's another county. They can't do anything about it. And since that, we used to have flooding, but it would go away in a fairly reasonable time. But uh, the worst cases that I've seen is in 97, 98, when we had the El Nino, a bad year of El Nino. I had four to five inches of water running through my yard out of Villa Rosa <coughs> because they have retention ponds and bay heads there. And again, in uh, 04, 05, same problem. We had water running through our yards. Uh, going to the road, Eagle Lane was covered in water. The ditches were full and there was no movement because there's just a little, down at the end of Eagle Lane, there's just a little bit of space for the water to drain out. So it just backs up, it just moves too slowly. Also, during that time, I've killed two moccasins during the um, El Nino and the hurricane. So it, it's, it's kind of a dangerous situation to be, try to walk out and get your mail and there's moccasins by your gate. So it's just something, I, I know you're probably gonna move forward, but it's gonna be the same scenario that I experienced at, at Villa Rosa. We'll just be flooded out once again. And I'll leave these thoughts with you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diane Konitz. I live at 17304 Chinaberry Road, Lutz. Um, I want to say that I'm part of the coalition. We started it, Jess and I and some other members, in 2015 after um, the 30 days of rain in July that flooded us all out. Um, we have progressively met with Commissioner Starkey and Pasco mm -hmm. County Stormwater, and they have been wonderful working for us. We actually overwhelmed the stormwater quarterly meetings to where they gave us our own meeting with the county. And they have regularly met with us and we've accomplished a lot. Um, I'm just a layman. I don't understand a lot of what you're talking about. I'm sure a lot of our people in the neighborhood don't, other than the hardships that they're experiencing and their land values are going down. What I'm hearing from this meeting today is I've, I owned my property since 2009. I moved there in Sierra Pines in 2010. 2012, for 1,500 town apartments to go in, nobody notified me of that. How did that land group use be approved back in 2012? Now they're saying they want to downsize, which sounds wonderful to us, but we are not notified. We don't have easements in our county. We don't have ditches. We don't have swales. We're an old neighborhood. And had I known that when I brought my property to move to Pasco County, to move into a natural wildlife environment, I probably wouldn't have bought my property. I like living in Pasco County. And I'm doing everything I can, along with Jess, that dedicates a whole ton of her time to do this for our community. We've had community meetings at um, Wade Braxton's house, and the, the momentum just keeps going forward. I hear the frustrations of all our neighbors constantly, and they're really, really concerned about this new development. I know that you're probably gonna pass this land use development idea, but I don't know where that takes us as far as your approval of the land use doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you're gonna grant permitting to build for the, because of the storm water. Is that what I'm understanding? Um, we don't go okay. into dialogue okay. and public we'll comment, dialogue. but we'll address it after you all are done. We'll okay, well, that's kind of things that I, I, I want to reiterate is that our hands are kind of tied if it's already been approved for 15,000 apartments, you know, 1,500, okay, 1,500. Well, that's a lot better, but still, um, it's, it's still a big impact on our community to take away from what we're trying to live in an ideal situation and to be able to drive out of our neighborhoods to get emergency vehicles in. And we're willing to work with the county. The coalition has you know, proved that already. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioner. My name is Patrick Kennedy. I am at 17320 Rain Tree Road. Um, I am Dr. Greer's neighbor, um, and we back up directly behind um, the picture that she provided to you. Our property backs right up to that. And uh, between our two properties, the townhomes, the 150 townhomes that are there are within 15 feet of our property line. 
Um, so I, I wanted to speak, I understand this uh, item two has to do with the, large, the, the bigger picture and we can address the water issues later. Um, it, it, my biggest concerns are the diminution in value of our, our property, especially the two of us, um, and privacy. Uh, my wife and I moved up uh, four years ago uh, from St. Petersburg um, to have some land to raise our five children. Um, and the, the gentleman that sold the house to us sold to us because we had children that we wanted to raise there. And he wanted to maintain that. He had a higher bid from someone else, um, but chose to sell this to us the, because we had one. children. He had raised his children there. Um, our home was built in 79. Um, and with townhomes directly behind us that are two stories, proposed two stories, I presume, um, regardless of whether it has a six-foot fence, which a, a, a woman named Tammy responded to my wife and said there will be a six-foot privacy fence. Well, if you can imagine a two-story building looking over a six-foot privacy fence, they get to watch my kids grow up, uh, probably just as much as I do. Um, so our property, uh, and, and I don't know who's living there, and people can move in. Um, we s scouted out the property to make sure it was a safe neighborhood before we moved in. Um, that we'll get to watch and see what happens uh, with that. Um, and so uh, understanding the bigger picture for us, it's our property values. Uh, I think Mr. Hoffman was the one who mentioned it earlier. Uh, if I've got somebody looking into my backyard, my, my home value, the one major comment that anyone that comes to my home says is the view is amazing. With a 15-foot setback, I've got no view. And I've got a fence there that my kids get to stare at. Um, so our property value will go down, um, and it'll be harder for us to sell that property if we decide to move because of this uh, being built. I, I, I'm not um, ignorant to the fact that development is going to happen, that there's a private landowner that can do with this property what he chooses to. What we're asking is to review this, that we would like the same setback that everyone else to the north of us uh, that is receiving, which is well over 100 feet because of the green space and the retention ponds. Thank you for your time. Mr. Thank Kennedy, um, could we get your address for the record? I don't know if we got that. I did, 17320 Rain Tree Road. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amanda Grayson. I live on 17360 Riverstone Drive with my husband and children. We purchased the, the land before having children knowing that we were gonna enjoy our two acres and be able to grow gardens and, and the fruit trees and let our children that we would have one day um, grow up on it. And with our, our land um, backs up right to one of the cypress heads on the adjoining property and it floods when it rains and it goes through our property. And we're just concerned that more water is going to rush through and it's going to disturb our garden that we're trying to sustain and grow our children on and our fruit trees to help provide, you know, cut costs with the grocery. Um, I'm a fourth generation Lutz, which I'm proud to say. There's not many people that get to say that. Um, and we're just, you know, we want to enjoy where we live. And it's battles like these that make it difficult. We didn't move out here to for apartments and for townhomes, which they built right across from 54 on us. And uh, I just thank you for you listening to our concerns. Ma'am, what was your address? Excuse what street? 17360 Riverstone. Riverstone, right. okay, thanks. Thank you. This is one where this was originally zoned. Good afternoon, Commissioner. My name is Jose Diaz. I live at 1565 Wildwood Lane in Lutz, Florida, in the Sierra Pine subdivision. My property is the property that backs up directly to South Branch Creek, um, the main part of the creek where most of the water in the neighborhood runs through. Um, and I want to talk to you today, and I'll do it quickly, about something called the law of unintended consequences, um, which we know that if they build this large subdivision, okay, we are going to get unintended consequences, no matter how great their engineers are. I work in an engineering field myself, and I know about this. Um, about five or seven years ago, when we had a large flooding event, the county came out and dug ditches along the side of the property and put <coughs> culverts to redirect some of the flood water that was standing 
to the South Branch Creek behind my property, okay? When I moved into this property, the ditch was three feet deep, so. And it had a nice little wooden bridge that the previous owner had built over it. And that was the little bridge in the creek that my wife fell in love with, and that's the reason we bought the property, mm -hmm. okay? Now that this culvert has been put in and these ditches have been dug out by the county, the extra water that's been fed to the ditch has caused so much soil erosion in the ditch that the trees on both sides of the ditch aren't getting ready to topple, okay? That is unintended consequences. Um, our neighborhood, well, though, was designed and built over 30 years ago, you know, four, more than closer to 40, I apologize, um, before um, uh, the subdivisions to the south of us uh, in the subdivision uh, Heritage Harbor, and before those subdivisions were built, okay, now it, so much water has been channeled, extra water has been channeled to our subdivision, okay, that FEMA has updated their uh, flood rate maps, okay, and has created a zone, AE, okay, just for the flooding that happens in our neighborhood, okay? That's unintended consequences. That's not all that natural when you're talking about, you know, in, in, a, in this, this span of over just 20 years. And with this subdivision and with this development, you're gonna get the same thing, unintended consequences. Uh, you can only move water so fast. You can only move water so, uh, and retain so much water. When you take a land that percolates and drains and you pave it and you build on it, okay, the water's gotta go somewhere. And then water, as we know, finds its own level and flows the path of least resistance. Guess where that is? So that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Uh, thank you. Does anyone else here want to speak to this is a public hearing? Not seeing anyone? Oh, excuse me. Come forward. State your name and address for the clerk. My name is John Herring. I have a residence at 17255 Rain Tree Lane. Um, I grew up in Sierra Pines. Now I presently live in Meadowbrook part time. Uh, in 1973, when my family moved there, I believe we were the third or fourth family to move in Sierra Pines. Uh, May 1976 was the first flood. Ever since then, every flood is worse and takes longer, and properties that were never flooded before are now presently flooded. I have seen this since I was only eight when I grew, moved there. And now I'm 54. And my concern is that the development is overdeveloped without uh, proper planning. That's all. All right. Thank you. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Ron, ask, please have, have everybody Hi. line up so we know. <clears throat> If there's anybody Anyone left, else that wants to speak, please line up it. right now. So, and then cut it. If not, we'll be done. So. Okay. My name is Denise Singleton. I live at 17916 Eagle Lane. Um, sorry, I don't like to do this. Um, Deep breath. <laughs> we bought the property. We live on Eagle Lane. We back up. We literally are on the county line, and. Um, when we bought the property, it was all cow pasture behind us. There was no Villa Rosa. Uh, Del Mabry was two lanes all the way up to 52 from Carrollwood. Looks like Fern, you didn't pass anybody. 54 was two lanes. Um, we bought the property, like I said, December of 1980. Uh, we drilled the well on my 21st birthday, and I'm 59. And we have seen so much change, and we now have flood on maps, um, I'm a realtor, and we have flood zone on our property now that was never considered flood zone before. Now the back part of our property is considered flood um, with the new flood maps, and it's because of Villa Rosa. We fought that, and we were promised that that was not gonna affect us. Our neighbors up and down um, Eagle Lane where Villa Rosa put retention ponds in, they're for looks. They don't do anything to let the water flow to the south like it used to before it was there. Um, so 
that was the beginning of it. Dolorosa was the beginning of the flooding for us. And Suncoast Parkway, Veterans Expressway, the widening and raising of 54. Meadowbrook was level. You used to drive straight out onto 54. Now you have to go uphill to get out of our neighborhood because 54 is built up so high. Um, and just like every, everybody else has said, everything around us has made us the retention pond. We're the bowl that holds all the water and it just continues to get worse. We've been out there through all the hurricanes, all the um, everything. Uh, my oldest son will be 34 next month and we were living there when Hurricane Elena came through and sat in you know, the bay. Um, we, during Hurricane Elena, where it just sat and rained, I was stuck in the hospital from Thursday to Monday because everything was shut down. Our backyard did not flood the way it floods right now. And that was, you know, with a hurricane sitting on top of Tampa for days. Um, again, it's just continuously gets worse. With all the building and development around us, everybody sits up higher than us, and the water has no place to go. And um, it, it is, it's ruining our property values. I have pictures of my front yard with water and you can't even see the street from one end of Eagle Lane down to the curve. It's just underwater, it looks like a big lake. You can't see the other streets. I mean, there's just, I have documentation of just roads that don't even look like roads. It looks like we live in lakes. And you know, you see a stop sign and just nothing but tons of water sitting everywhere. Thank, Thank you. you Hi, my name is Brittany Broxton, and I live at 17420 Cedarwood Loop. You've already heard from my dad, and he talked about the whole drainage issue in the water. I am not an environmental science or an engineering major, where I go to school at Florida International University. However, I am an English major. But this meeting is supposed to be talking about the bigger picture and the overall plan of the apartments. I'm a sophomore, well I will be a sophomore at FIU come August, and I left for Miami in August of 2018. I was gone for nine months. When I came home in May, I didn't recognize the town that I grew up in. I grew up in Pasco County for the full 19 years of my life. I lived at 17420 Cedarwood Loop for 17 years of it. And coming home and not recognizing it and feeling like I was back down in Miami, that was sad. I loved the beautiful area that was Pasco County. And every day that I drive to church and I go down 54 to Little Road and there's 1,800 more homes up already, there's no need to build more, especially not 15 feet from our neighborhood. When all the rest of them get sold, then you can start talking about building more homes. It's not a lack of planning, it's just a lack of caring about the original people who have started Pasco County. And when I return home and hear that half my neighborhood wants to leave, that's sad because that makes me want to leave too. That makes me want to leave and move down to the already industrialized city in which I go to college, not return home to this new industrialized city that used to be beautiful, that used to be full of wildlife and green acres. Now it's just cement blocks and cookie cutter homes. The bigger picture of it is, is that you're trying to turn it into a city that it's not supposed to be. If you're going to talk about conservation of wildlife, you're not, you're not preaching what you're talking. And I can tell you that right now because every time I leave my neighborhood, there's a dead animal on the street. There's animals in our backyard. Our yard lines the creek. Every summer we have to worry about water moccasins, deer, rabbit animals coming after our animals. And that's sad. So why are you trying to push more of that wildlife into our neighborhood and onto the roads? Because that's not conservation. And that's not conservation of the beautiful Pasco County that we used to live in. And that's all. Thank you. My name is Nathan Herring. Let me, let me just say, because he's not saying it. That we don't, you're not allowed to do the applause in here. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> okay. My name is Nathan Herring. I own an uh, unfinished investment property at 17540 Cedarwood Loop. I also live in the neighborhood with my wife at 17653 Hickory Tree Court. Um, the unfinished house, it's a two-story, 
solid concrete house that sits about four feet off the ground. Uh, there's uh, one acre of wetlands in front of the property. Um, you, there's actually a driveway through the wetlands. And then behind my property is the 160 acre uh, pasture now. Uh, they're gonna raise that pasture up five feet, bring in a ton of fill. Uh, and that water is gonna flow. If you look at their, zone, uh, their drainage plans, a lot of the water flows from their retention ponds into wetland F, uh, which flows right across the front of my property. Um, I was in the process of trying to bring this property back to life and the county um, very quickly told me to rip off the, tr the trusses, the roof, uh, bring it back down to concrete block. Uh, when I asked them why, they would go silent. Uh, they wouldn't return my phone calls. I got tons of phone calls, emails, trying to get an answer on why I had to rip off the trusses when nobody would look at it. Um, I had to reach out to Starkey to get the county to respond. Now they're saying demo the entire structure, two-story concrete block. What was um, your address again? 17540 Cedarwood Loop. If you look at the map, uh, my property is going to be completely flooded, and I feel that uh, I've talked to tons of engineers, contractors, framers, uh, even past county inspectors, and no one can understand why the building official is uh, – wanted me to demo this house. Um, the building official told me to talk to somebody that actually knows the building code. So I went to the people that write the Florida building code. Um, and they agreed with me. They said they've sent me letters. And the building official still says, I need to tear down the house. Uh, and I feel that it's my property is going to be completely flooded because I already have wet lands in front. Uh, the back is already a little wet. And uh, I'm just extremely concerned with all, you know, the unethical practices that this development is already breaking. Thank you. So, right. Thank Mr. You. Chair Mr. Chairman, I see yes. Mr. Rosenthal is going to talk to this gentleman in reference to the building code. He's assistant county administrator in charge of that department. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, I'd just like to say that uh, I review these types of cases with the building official. And in this particular case, the building official think that there was mold present, and then the, the uh, roof has been uh, there for a number of years. So she wants an engineer's report for the structure itself and for the roof. But we think we can work those things out. Okay, so talk to the gentleman. What about okay. the driveway through the wetland? Is that, was that permanent? It was proposed. It was on the site plan when the house was built. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. 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 Do we, does Back the applicant want to come back up? Yeah, I have questions. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, Let's let's have staff, oh, staff, staff come yeah. back. and then the applicant, please. I'll, I'll ask a couple that you can go. Sure, sure. I got, Mr. Chairman, I've got a couple questions. Okay. Is that okay? We good? Director of staff? Yeah, the staff, and, and Mr. Two might have to okay. speak on those too. <laughs> so in reference to the buffering, you know, we obviously have a lot of these um, cases on a, on a regular basis, and um, we work towards compromise when it comes to buffering at, at times. Mr. Um, Chairman, not to interrupt the commissioner, but the buffering wouldn't be part of the comprehensive plan. And I know it will be, okay. but it, it was brought up, so I want to okay. get a couple answers now. I apologize, but um, I know we'll, we'll get to that too. But. Um, what is the proposed buffering 15 feet at this time, like the resident stated? Joe, you might have to answer. You can't talk from the audience. I, I, I can answer that. <laughs> yes, Mr. Moore, the land development code for the adjacent residential uses, your code says 10 foot minimum mm -hmm. between residential uses. We propose 15 feet. And I don't know if you have that concept plan, but there is only one small section of this entire subdivision where we have any proposed development adjacent. I understand there are two homes there adjacent, but there are 20 homes in that subdivision that have nothing adjacent to them. Uh, the short answer is when we get to the MPUD, mm -hmm. uh, we are offering more than your code requires, and certainly we would look at enhanced, whether they want a berm or, as we've done in recent MPUD, if they want a berm, if they want trees on the berm, if they prefer that or a fence. We're happy to work out the treatment in that area, but we are, we are providing more than, than the code uh, requires. And, and I guess the other point is they're going to have some low-rise 
fee simple townhomes there now. Under the current plan, they could have had four or five story apartments yeah. adjacent to the community. So right. it's clearly, I understand they don't want anything next to them. I get that part, but this is much less than what is already approved uh, adjacent to them. Yeah, so, and I appreciate that. Um, I guess we can wait till we get to that point, but just think it over. You know, again, you know, we do come to compromises quite often up here. Absolutely, and we understand. There may be a situation where we could look at increasing that buffering for those buffers. We're, we're, we are happy to increase the treatment in the buffer area to make it to make it work better. But we'll we'll talk about that. We can talk about that. Okay. Yes, sure so, Mr. Chairman, gotcha. if I may, yes. can we have the staff summary, then applicant rebuttal, then the commission can ask their questions of either either team they they need to eat so that we stay on the procedural yep. record. Well, I'm going to go back. I need to ask the staff three or four more questions. So. Okay. In essence, the applicant is seeking a large scale comprehensive plan amendment to change the future land use designation from Res 12, Res, um, Com, Off, and Con. CPD to create a flexible mixed use project that will encourage opportunities for different types of housing, convenient shopping, and recreation on roughly 164.8 acres with approximately 97.4 developable located on the south side of State Road 54, approximately 2,000 feet east of Meadow Brook Drive. We also do have the sub area policy that we can review if that is something that the board would like to as well. The edits. Any questions? So can staff. I go, I can continue on now? Any questions? Yes. Staff. If, if so, that's what staff has. Yep, thank you. So um, going back to some of the statements that were made before. So 2012 is when this originally was zoned for Res 12. Is that correct? Is that? Uh, yes, the Nectarios Pitos Planning and Development Department. Okay. There's a number of future land uses right. on the site. So prior to 2012, were there any entitlements for this property? Or was it just owned like AR or something? There were likely entitlements on the property there, previously. Do we know what those entitlements were? Uh, I do not know them off the top of my head. I know that's what they have. I'm trying to, my point will be making it, made in a second, but. The current application is different from the 2012 application, so it's, it's a completely different matter. But it, I, I don't know off the top of my head what was there previous to the Res 12 and the other future land use categories that exist today uh, prior to 2012, Again, but it was likely agriculture. My, my, I'm just asking because it was brought up by a few people about, you know, they, they moved out for a certain time. So I just wondered if some of the, the there was already residential zoning even prior to 2012, there may have been. I don't know. So, well, what the, the surrounding the surrounding categories right. are Res three. Mm -hmm. So, so it, there's likely yeah, that it was. It, res I mean, likely, yeah. likely it was. It was. It was probably a residential category. So, okay. Part of part of what the issues are coming up is about flooding, and and the FEMA maps have changed. Actually, FEMA maps were put in place in 2000. 14 it was a new FEMA map. FEMA maps prior to that date, because I was chairman of Swift Mud at the time of 2011, 10 and 11, and we were working on renewing the FEMA map in Fort Pasco County, and that came into place around 2014. But I can tell you the FEMA maps before that time were not very good. They had things at different levels and there was some flooding happening. So they, they went through a process of correcting that and the correction came in 2014. So if you moved there before then, you were under a different look than you are after that period in time. So uh, the so levels changed as far as elevations and flood maps. So on October the 23rd of 2012, the BCC approved a rezoning from the original zoning district of AC Agricultural to MPUD Master Plan Unit okay. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. We have a forest. Um. I want to um, 
there's a lot more I want to say and a lot more I want staff to say, especially the staff that's well, been working on Sierra Pines Coalition, but I don't think this is the place for it. This, is, this is not the time and right. place for that. This right. is fair for this amendment. So this, um, ordinance this is a reduction in the amount of um, use on this property and, um, and the landowner has property rights. We, we've heard you. We'll hear you again, I'm sure, and we will work with you, but I'm going to... Um, Move She's for approval of the Mr. Chairman. I don't know. I don't know whether the applicant wishes to have rebuttal. Mr. But it's, would you but like it to know? Is, I mean, he's going to be coming up again. I'm sure. Wait a minute. Would no, like sir, for, the, for the record, the applicant has no rebuttal on the plan amendment. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to um, uh, move that we approve this, and then we will just go more in depth on some of the other issues that were brought up that are more germane to the next one that's coming out here so i have a motion second and a second All discussion please a roll call discussion please. i haven't had any discussion yet so i wanted to jump right. in what what concerns me with both of these items coming back to back um there's a recommendation for approval here um when i look at the following item come up on p12 that's on consent now I know Commissioner Moore, Commissioner Stark, you've been studied, studying these flooding issues just like I have all over Northwestern Pasco as well. How it's got to this point, and especially beyond consent, I don't know if we've done our due diligence as well, far as what's going can on. Can we address that when the next one comes up? Because otherwise I can have staff come up and tell you what That's, we've been doing. But it's not, not relevant place, to this man. one. This is just. This is the right time. This. Not the right time. Yeah. But we'll we'll talk about it again. Okay. Okay, this is by uh, roll call vote. District 2, Commissioner Aye. Moore. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Nay. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed. All right, then we'll, we'll be bringing the other one up in a little bit. So P3. P3 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 10th, 2019. Uh, item P3, oh, Eric Herman's Planning and Development. Item P3, PDD 1909-84, CPAL 1913-2025 Comprehensive Plan mm -hmm. Tax Amendment. This is a staff initiated comprehensive plan tax amendment. And I will begin by reading the ordinance title as this is the adoption hearing. An ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan providing for a tax amendment to Objective FLU 1.1, Principles for Growth Management, and a tax amendment to Policy FLU 1.4.4, Residential Compatibility Buffer Standards between Residential and Non-Residential Land Uses, providing for repeal or severability and effective date. The Pasco County Planning and Development Department formerly known as the Growth Management Department and Pasco County Board of County Commissioners, collectively have always interpreted Policy FLU 1.1 and Policy FLU 1.4 as follows. As an intent for the county to pursue a vision for the future growth and development of the county and preserves and enhances the quality of communities, the, the county has never interpreted Objective FLU 1.1 as intending to preserve or enhance property values. In sum, what planning and development is doing is that because of other parties have recently interpreted Objective FLU 1.1.1 as intending to preserve or enhance property values and have interpreted FLU, property FLU 1.4.4 as being self-executing. Therefore, the planning and development department is recommending said policy and objective to be amended to clarify the county's long-standing interpretations of such objective and policy. So we just had a staff uh, initiate a comprehensive plan a minute just to interpret these objectives in a better way. The following language has been removed as the intent of the county is to pursue a vision for the future growth and development that preserves and enhances the quality of its communities. The county has never interpreted Objective FLU 1.1.1 as intending to preserve or enhance uh, property values. The following language has been removed as the policy is intended to require future land development code amendments to establish in the land, de land development code better standards between residential and non-residential land uses from certain sensory intrusions identified in said policy. The county has never interpreted policy FLU 1.4.4 to be self-executing, primarily because the comp plan does not contain objective standards of crit or criteria 
for the protection of residential uses from sensory intrusion. And with that, we recommend the Board of County Commissioners find the amendment consistent with the comprehensive plan and adopt the proposed amendment by roll call vote. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is anyone here to speak to this item? I have no one signed up for it. Come forward. Um, may I ask a question? You may. And I, 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 I this might be out of place here, but. Um, no, let's, let's wait. And, oh, you want to speak to this? We got someone to speak. I just have a clarification of this since I, hi. Of P3? Uh, pardon? Is it on P3? It's on this. What's Which is, is this P3, yes. Um, is sorry, this, your name and oh, address for the record. Sorry, uh, Jess, Dr. Jessica Greer, 17324 Rain Tree Road, Lutz, Florida, 33558. Um, is this talking about a sensory intrusion, such as in speaking to our backyard with the townhouse, townhouses 15 feet? Is that what they're striking from, the, from this? Is that what I'm interpreting? <coughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, Natalia Spitos with the Planning and Development Department. Uh, th she's referring to policy flu 1.4.4. Um, and that, in that policy, it's referring to adjacent non residential land uses. So it's not referring to any residential land uses. Yeah. I think that's what you're asking. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, well, I have a question. So come back up. All right. <laughs> um, does this deal with our problem with the car dealerships and they're 75 feet and is that going to be covered in this? Uh, this particular amendment does not necessarily uh, relate to that issue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Where, yes, sir. Uh, question. I, and Denise Hernandez. I asked Denise a question because I just want to deal with uh, a specific situation which can be around the county. If a person owns property abutting each other, and it could be residential to commercial, commercial to residential, et cetera, will this give us flexibility in that if it's one property owner around that they can determine whether they're going to be intruded upon through their own use as long as they own the properties? So it, all this does is it just it doesn't change the really the policy. It, the policy remains the same. It's just um, it it still protects from sensory sensory intrusions. I'm I'm not. I, is there well, maybe a little bit more specific? Well, here's here's, here's my concern. Mm -hmm. Let, let's say I own four pieces of property because that's yes. the parcel I was talking with you earlier, and I own two people two mm -hmm. parcels that are residential residential, and I own commercial commercial. If I'm the one property owner, can I say to the county, look, I don't need you to protect me against myself? Oh, okay, I understand, I apologize. I, I remember the situation. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit different. It's not, this policy has nothing to do with what we were talking about yesterday, having to do with a, per, a, piece of, a person who owns four pieces of property and really is just developing it commercial on one of his or her pieces and the other pieces remain residential. What you were explaining was buffering between uh, the parcels. It has nothing to do with this uh, policy. Nothing to do with this. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, by roll call vote. No. Uh, was the hand raised? Mm -hmm. Was someone else here to speak? It's been, we've already case? closed public comment. Did they close it? You closed public comment. Public comment. Mr. Con it was closed. Well, the public well, comment was already closed, but this is a public hearing. But it's Come comment was closed. I don't think it was closed. I, right. I, no, we just were asking. Mm -hmm. There yeah. was no one standing at the mic, and I went ahead. Okay. Yeah, okay. motion. We didn't go through it. Hello, my name is Jennifer Robertson, 17245 Riverstone Drive, Lutes, Florida, 33558. Um, I don't see the young lady that has the baby. I think she's left because of the baby. No, she's but right her property b would be affected by this. Hers is going to back directly to the parking lots. This, this is not, no, no, this this is is not the same item. And it's, this is a different item. This is, a different item. This is not. And it's residential to residential. It's not residential to non-residential. Hers is going to be residential to non-residential. No, that's a different. 
that's, that's going to go back. That's going back a little while. Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I've got a motion and a second by roll call vote on P3. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed. Move on to P4. P4 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 24th, 2019, May, May 31st, 2019, June 7th, 2019, and June 14th, 2019. Good afternoon. I'm Jeffrey Jenkins with Planning and Development. Um, item P4 is an ordinance establishing the Mitchell Ranch Community Development District pursuant to Chapter 190 of the Florida Statutes providing for authority and power of the district providing for powers and duties of the district, providing for the Board of Supervisors of the district, providing for the district budget, providing for functions of the district, providing for miscellaneous provisions, providing for an effective date. Lenar Homes um, LLC has submitted the petition uh, establishing the CDD to be known as Mitchell Ranch CDD. Here's the location at uh, Little Road and State Road 54. The CDD is located within a portion of the Mitchell Ranch uh, Master Plan Development and is approximately 226.742 acres. The CDD will contain approximately 661 single family residential dwelling units that will be assessed per the petition. And planning development's recommendation is to adopt the ordinance to establish the CDD. Is the applicant here? Good afternoon, Kevin Rialli with Sterns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street, Tampa, Florida. Uh, we actually weren't planning on presenting today the CDD complies with all the statute requirements and takes burden off the taxpayer. So unless there are any questions. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yes. question. You can relate back to everyone. I know there's some folks here that work with Lenar. Just hoping that we see a movie theater in here. <laughs> I'm going to say that to everybody who comes up here for this. So we don't have to drive all the way to his neighborhood to go to a nice movie theater. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> No, we don't want to have to drive and we want to get those cars off of 54. We want to stay in our hood. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have no one signed up from the public on this item. Is there anyone in the house that would like to speak to this item? I'm seeing as in my district. See, seeing um, none. I will move to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Is this roll call? Yes, it is. This is roll call. A roll call vote. Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Um, Motion passed. Mr. Chairman, I wanted to ask the county attorney a question. Uh, do, we, do we have to vote on CDDs? Is that something that staff can approve? Is that statu statutory? Ordinance. You're Just adopting an ordinance. Yeah. Oh, okay, because we've never <laughs> not approved one, and it seems like it's kind of one of those. You have to adopt an ordinance to create, to establish the CDD, and that can't be delegated. All right. No, all of them have been this way. I, just I appreciate your comments, too, but we like CDDs because normally they pay for their own roads. And P5. Yeah, they pay for like their that. own problems. P5 is published in the Tampa Bay Times, June 10th, 2019. PDD 19-1069 is a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment in the name of CPAS 1803 Sierra Oakstead Tract 4. This is the adoption hearing, so I'm going to read the ordinance title into record. An ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan providing for a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use maps, map 2-15 and sheets 20, changing from res 3 residential 3 dwelling units per gross acre to com commercial on approximately 3.629 acres of real property located on the northeast side of State Road 54, approximately one quarter mile east of Oakstead Boulevard, providing for a repealer severability and an effective date. 
And on June 20th, 2019, the Planning Commission, acting as a local planning agency, held a public hearing on the proposed comprehensive plan amendment, see pass 1803, and unanimously recommended approval to the Board of County Commissioners. The subject property is located on the northeast side of State Road 54, approximately one quarter mile east of Oakstead Boulevard. Here is an aerial view of the subject property. On the north, south, and west, there's a rest three, and on the east side, it's rest six. As you can see, it's surrounded by uh, wetlands and by established MPDs. The proposed flow is calm commercial, as you can see in the inset map. Due to the location of the subject property located on the major east-west arterial highway and also lying within a close proximity to the Suncoast Parkway and highway 40, US Highway 41, commercial is an appropriate flu for the subject property. The calm flu designation will allow the subject property flexibility given the size and geographical site constraints that surround the property. And with that, Planning and Development recommends approval to the Board of County Commissioners and to find the amendment consistent with the comprehensive plan and to adopt the proposed amendment by roll call vote. Thank you, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Good afternoon. Mr. Hobby. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Clark Hobby, Hobby and Hobby, PA, 109 North Brush Street, Tampa, Florida. Uh, we're fine with staff's recommendation of approval. This is the Sierra's last partial. Uh, that's within Oakstead and uh, was previously a support commercial uh, site anyway. Uh, the MPUD expired, so we have to do a small scale land use amendment and then a rezoning C2 that will be here in a month or two. So appreciate your support. Okay. Question. Clark, what's that? Is that a house there that you're going around? Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's like a, it's, it's not on the site, it's adjacent to it. It's like a Verizon technical support oh, building that right. it's like got some technical or computer equipment in it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I have no one signed up for this item. Is anyone here to speak for this item? Yeah, that's four. That's two. Move mm -hmm. approval. Seeing no one. Yeah. Seeing no one. He moved approval. It. Did I get I a second? second? You did. All right. I got a motion and a second. Roll call District vote. District 2. District, two, District four, 2. Commissioner one. Moore. Aye. District uh, 3. Commissioner Starkey. Aye. But there might be discrepancy here. It's District 2. And it says District 4. It's not. No, it's in district, district 4. Four. Yeah. The Sierra's property. It's uh, I'm north, south of 54, not yep. north. This no, it's north. It says it's District, district north. 4. And he's says. District 4. Oh, it's not. Oh, okay. So okay, it's up there. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> this is the Oakstead property. That's the Oakstead. Yeah. Not. Oh, I parked in Not the Tampa. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. We're good. We're good. All right. District <laughs> 4, <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Wells. <laughs> district 4, <laughs> Commissioner Wells. Commissioner Wells. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. You're messing Aye. me up. <laughs> Motion approved. P6. Uh, P6 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 5th, 2019 and May 10th, 2019. Good afternoon. Alexandra Laporte with Planning and Development. We're here for the second and adoption hearing for the temporary moratorium ordinance for self-storage of mini warehouse. I wanted to um, make mention that I did give the clerk a new agenda memo that just has a summary of the changes that was done to the ordinance based on the, your directive from last board hearing. And I think that was also passed out to you. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. It wasn't in your original packet. Um, since this is an adoption hearing, I will read the um, title, An Ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners Establishing a Temporary 180-Day Moratorium on the Submission and Acceptance of Applications Not Previously Submitted Through the Pre-Application Process Prior to the May 7, 2019 Pasco County Commission Agenda Online Posting of the Introduction of this Proposed Ordinance for plan development, comprehensive plan amendments, rezonings, preliminary site plans, and preliminary development plans where the use of land for mini warehouse and self-storage facilities is specifically identified in the application. On May 7, 2019, this proposed ordinance was introduced to the Board of County Commissioners 
at that hearing. Um, the Board of County Commissioners directed the Planning and Development Department to conduct subsequent public hearings on this proposed ordinance. On May 23rd, 2019, during the local planning agency public hearing, the LPA found the proposed ordinance to be inconsistent with the comprehensive plan with no specific policy cited. The proposed ordinance was continued from the BCC hearing on the 4th to the June 19th, 2019 hearing in Newport Ritchie. Oops, sorry. Based on the directive of the Board of County Commissioners at the June 19th hearing, the following are changes to the ordinance as presented today for a roll call vote. While the maximum duration of this moratorium is 180 days, this moratorium shall not exceed 120 days unless approved by the BCC by a majority vote to extend to the full 180 day maximum duration. The moratorium shall not apply to standalone recreational vehicles and or boat storage facilities. The geographic applicability of this moratorium shall be the area of the um, State Road 5456 corridor as depicted in Exhibit A of the ordinance, and I have a slide on that following this. The moratorium <coughs> clarified the language for exemptions to include where many warehouse or self-storage facilities were specifically listed as a permitted use in the special exception, MPD conditions, rezoning conditions, plan development sub-area policies, or land use equivalency matrices. Before I get to the um, revised uh, applicability, we did go to the examples that Commissioner Moore um, cited at our previous hearing to understand those dimensions and where the location of those parcels are. So this was one. This is the storage center, center of um, Wesley Chapel. This is the Morningstar so storage off of um, Route 56. Both of these, the parcels were about 500 feet um, from the right of way of um, either 54 or 56. So as part of our exhibit, we've um, again modified the applicability of the moratorium to include the entirety of 5456 corridor with a, hundred, with a 660 foot buffer from the right of way as depicted on the map here. The new proposed timeline is that um, in August we would have continued um, stakeholder meetings and work with the ordinance development team to finalize the standards um, for the new ordinance <coughs> on the self-storage self facilities. In October we would come before the LPA and PC and in November we'd come before you again. Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So I do appreciate the team and, and staff listen to all the commissioner's concerns and, you know, obviously you rolled that all into the revised warrant. So I'm very appreciative of that. I, to me, this works. It, 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 I say personally, you know, this obviously my concerns were along that corridor. Um, again, we talk about compromise at times and looking at the setbacks and I feel that's um, definitely would be it's applicable for this situation because it still allows people to move forward with these it, we just need to have that buffering in, along our corridors and save those for job creating sites so um, and I know Commissioner Wells, Commissioner Mariana and I think all commissioners had their own concerns and it looks like they were all included in there I know you had the concerns about 19 so that was pulled out 52 was pulled off so I think we got to a good place here I mean I know we still need to have public comment but I'm very supportive of this um, All right, and and um, I agree. Thanks for our tweaking this a little bit. And I just want to remind um, our development community: this doesn't mean we're not going to allow storage units, but um, there will be some tweaks on how they they fit on these properties. Because, and and while it was said to me, well, do you realize the amount of property taxes a storage um, facility would Still pay? Right. The issue it is that they don't provide any jobs. And um, the State Road State Road 54 is our jobs corridor and it's really important and 56 that we, um, we preserve the ability 
to bring those um, businesses that provide more than two jobs um, to to the county so that our residents can live, work, and play here and not have to drive um, to other counties for employment. So I, I'm glad that we have the foresight to do this. I, I, I'm glad also we're gonna limit to 120 days and get to work and, and um, so this is a good thing. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes. And I, I think staff has done a great job of this as well. I just wanna make sure on the map line, it's everywhere it's the dark line is 54, 56, and we're, we're good. Oh, that, I don't think it's going back. <laughs> Just to the map. Yeah, perfect. So we were there with the, all the dark lines connected all the way through, we'll go. Yes. Yes, so okay. you see that the, um, where the colors are accentuated, um, that's the 660 foot buffer, and it's along the entirety of the corridor, 54 to 56, from um, US 19 the all the way to um, the where it ends in uh, Zephyr Hills. Oh, 301? Oh, we it's close it. to 301. It doesn't um, reach, it's 98 on the southern portion of 56, and there's a, a lane that right before the city line. Ooh. But why Zephyr does it Hills. not go to 301? Because that is where 56 that, now goes to. That, that is 301, though. <laughs> on 56, on the 56 corridor. Yeah. yeah thank you. Then that it goes all the way. I'm sorry. Am I? That's 301. The, yeah, that's 301. Back. I'm that sorry. I'm a little. I just want to make sure we put those storage so facilities. <laughs> sorry. All right, but I like it. I just want to make sure. Thank you. That was really all right, good. Thank that's you. Nice. Okay. Um, Pleasure of the board. Public no. Public well, excuse you. me. I have no one signed up for this item. From the public, anyone here wishing to speak to this item? See number four. Mid. Second. Mr. Chairman, if I can yes. have the board's indulgence. In section five, the, the 120 days, I just want to get some clarifying language in there. Um, okay. Because I, I wanted to make it clear, it, that's, I just asked Mr. Goldstein, the intent is that it would not have to go back through the ordinance amendment process to get that additional 60 days. Um, so, if that language that's been added states approved by the Board of County Commissioners at a public meeting by majority vote to extend to the full, I think it makes it clear that that's, you, okay. they're just, they'll just bring it back to you at a regularly scheduled board meeting and ask you if they can have the additional 60 days. Hopefully we don't even get to that, but okay. I just want to make so it So restate clear. my motion so to add to include the um, at a public added, added um, language from the county at a public office. Meeting. Okay. Thank you. And a second. And then second. Second. Okay. I need a second though. No. I did a second. second. Okay. Got a motion and a second by roll call vote. District two, Commissioner. Aye. Walker. District three, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District four, Commissioner Wells. Nay. District Ooh. five, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District one, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed. Move on to P7. P7 was published in the Tampa Bay Times, May 24, 2019. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Denise Hernandez. P7 is PDD 19 CU 35. It's conditional use in the name of David W. and Tracy M. Ros Rosmus for a paintball field and archery range in an AC district. The applicant has withdrawn his app. There, the applicants have withdrawn their application, so there's no further action required by the board at this time. Um, question, Denise. Yes. Okay. Was this the Olympic Archer? It was not, no. This is way, way northeast Pasco. Okay. okay. Move on to the PA. Okay. Yes, uh, it was published in the Tampa Bay Times on June 10th, 2019. Item P P8 is PDD 191111. It's a large scale comprehensive plan amendment. CPAL 1904. This is a request for continuance to the August 6, 2019 Board of County Commissioners no. meeting at 1.30 in Dade City. Move to continue. Mayor. Second. Second. Right. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion passed. P9. P9 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on March 15, 2019. P9 is PDD 19 7351. It's a zoning amendment, Grand Oaks 
MPUD. Uh, this comes to you with a recommendation of continuance. Actually, the applicant has requested a continuance to the August 6, 2019 Board of County Commissioners meeting at 1.30 in Dade City. Move to continue. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. like to say. Motion passed. Aye. P10. Publication. P10 was published in the Tampa Bay Times June 21st, 2019. Item P10, PDD 197398, Birch O. Candigian and Paul O'Grady. Change in zoning from R2 to an MF2, multiple family high density district. This comes to you with a recommendation from actually the applicant has requested he continues to August 6th, 2019, BCC meeting at 1.30 in Dade City. Move to continue. Second. Got a motion and a second to continue. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed aye. Right sign. Motion passed. P11. P11 was published in the Tampa Bay Times June 7, 2019. Mr. Chairman, would you like the procedures read? Yes. Uh, there are two rezoning agendas, regular and consent. Staff will present each application to the Board of County Commissioners. If staff or planning commission has recommended approval there is, and there is no opposition to the application, the application will be considered by the Board without further presentation. If staff or planning commission has recommended denial or if there is opposition to the application, the applicant will be given five minutes for presentation. The opposition will be given three minutes for each individual or five minutes for a group representative. And the applicant will be given three minutes for rebuttal. Any individual disagreeing with staff or planning commission recommendation or anyone wishing to object to any condition of the rezoning may at this time request the petition be pulled from the consent agenda, in which case, that application will be heard under the regular agenda later on during the meeting. Otherwise, all rezoning applications on the consent agenda will be approved by a single motion and vote. If you wish to speak to any petition, please give your name and address and whether or not you've been sworn for the record. These are quasi-judicial public hearings. The law in Florida is that mere public support or opposition of an application is insufficient for this board to take action. Please limit your comments to those criteria found within the board's land development code. I would also suggest that the clerk uh, administer the oath for this yes. section. Okay. Okay. If anyone is here to speak on the remainder of the public hearing items, could you please stand to be sworn in? Is anyone that wishes to speak on the remaining items? So if you're here to speak on P12 and P18. Okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Okay, thank you. Okay. Item P11 is PDD 190898. In the name of Watergrass MPUD, CKB Development LLC. This is a substantial modification to the uh, Watergrass MPUD to modify um, it by removing the promenade town center from parcel I and establishing a business center area along, the, along with changes to existing entitlements, variations from the land development code section 907.1.E, parking facilities required, and from section 905.1 neighborhood parks on approximately 77.08 acres. This item comes to you with a recommendation of approval with conditions from both uh, planning and development department and from the Pasadena Hills Planning and Policy Committee. Is there anyone here from the public wishing to oppose this item? <coughs> Seeing none, remains on consent. Um, my recommendation to you is you pull P12 off of consent. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and that would leave P11 as the only. <laughs> you might as well take a okay. motion on P11. Okay, Move we'll approval. take a motion on P11 then. Move approval on P11. Second. Second motion. motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. P12. P12 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on April 26, 2019. Good afternoon, Tammy Snyder, current planning. Smith 54 and PUD, PDD 1973-94. Okay, I'll just breeze through these. You've already seen these, the other location map. Tammy, you may want to pick your mic up a little bit. Yes. Better? Yeah, better. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. A little better. Yeah, this thing needs new batteries, I think. <laughs> so. 
All right, proposed is a rezoning request from an MPUD master planned unit development to an MPUD master planned unit development to decrease residential entitlements from 1,598 to 700 attached, detached, and multifamily, and add an additional 10 hotel rooms for a total of 130 hotel rooms on approximately 164.8 acres. The applicant is also seeking a corresponding comprehensive plan amendment, CPAL 1906, for change in the future land use from Res 12, conservation, commercial, and office to PD planned development. And presently, the subject site is unimproved. <coughs> the surrounding zoning districts, existing land uses, future land uses. It's located in the South Market and Urban Service areas, and the applicant is requesting a variation from Land Development Code Section 907.1.D.2 on site parking to allow a reduction in the size of the parking stalls for the multifamily. The applicant is also requesting a variation from LDC section 901.1.F.3 on-site parking to allow a reduction in the number of required parking spaces. As there is a bus stop close by, there's additional parking in the mixed-use area adjacent to the pro uh, within the project, and the project is also designed for walkability. The applicant developer is requesting a variation from LDC section 905.1 neighborhood parks to allow a reduction in the required park amount within the multifamily portion only as they propose fitness style amenities and the area shall be connected to sidewalks and trails that will provide access to additional community gathering, socializing, recreational areas within the mixed use areas. The applicant is requesting a variation from the LDC section 901.3.0 requirements for turning lanes to allow a reduction in the length of the required turn lanes at the intersection of State Road 54 and Ballantrae Boulevard. And the proposed request is consistent with the Pasco County LDC chapter 400 subsection 402.2 zoning amendment, MPUD master plan unit development, and with the applicable provisions of the Pasco County comprehensive plan. And PDD recommends approval of the rezoning request with conditions. And Commissioner Mariano, if I may speak to your question previously, why was this one on consent? Um, I believe the uh, citizens received a letter about the infrastructure plans that are currently in under review. And that is what garnered all the excitement. There's, there's currently infrastructure plans in. All right. Um, if I could, Mr. Chairman, then? Yes. All right, so would you, Mr. Bowles, would you put that picture up? Right. I asked Mr. Bowles to put up a picture of what the flooding shows in the area. So the Sun Coast Parkway is on the left side. The center part of the whole map where it says the three A's are together in the E, it shows there, but it shows all the flooding down below and to the sides. Now, I know you get a lot of exceptions that you're, or conditions you're looking to put in here that are gonna kind of minimize some of the effect, but somehow we've got to control a lot of water in there. Um, yes. Over the years, and, and I know, Commissioner Morris Stark, I know you've been down there working on this, these issues for quite a bit. When I look at areas like Timber Oaks, we put a basin of special concern in place for that development. Uh, and I will say, one of my items I meant to do on committee reports today was actually to make a motion that we actually have staff go find a way to pull it back with all the improvements we made that area. But when I see the areas of Holiday Hills, Iron Bark, Gray Birch, Timber Oaks, Jasmine Lakes, Thousand Oaks that have issues with flooding, this is a time to address this before this thing comes further with all the exception that's want. Clearly this shouldn't have been on, I mean, I, I don't know how it got to consent. I really don't. Um, there, there's been no opposition up until. But, but I'm gonna say recently. with what we know of the flooding right down below this, I don't know why staff wouldn't have looked at it a lot closer, knowing those flood maps that are there. I mean, if that's not part of the staff's concerns, it needs to be for the future. So this we're is, not this is the MPD, that, those are handled at the site right. plan. That's the wrong part of the process. Yeah, this is, this is not about the MPD at all. This is, this this is about the MPD. This is, so the, yeah, those issues happens, you're bringing up are the issues about flooding. They haven't even gone through the engineering way. yet. 
But it, we are looking at them right now. Those are the infrastructure plans that Tammy was referring to. But the, the process currently is that the MPUD is coming before the board to reestablish entitlements that are lower than what was previously approved. So there's a, a just, the general reduction in the intensities is it plays an important role in the review of the infrastructure plans that, come, that are coming in now for review. When I, when I look at what's coming up and these conditions that you want to put in there as well, I'm just wondering if giving up those concessions right now is the appropriate time to do that or should we wait yeah. for down the road? Down the road. When the MPUD. I mean, what we're looking at now is less use on the This is the MPUD now today, guys. Just the amount of use. So just to clarify, that site planning, that typically has conditions of its own involved. These are just conditions associated with the MPUD. But if I'm going to look at the MPUD and how this development is going to come in and how it's going to be retaining water, you know, we we put sometimes and we've made people go to the stronger concerns and what Swift, Swift, Swift might has in place for rules and put in stronger concerns. I'm thinking this is probably a good property to go take a look at doing that, especially from what I'm hearing for year after year. And I know for well, years you've been working on this. I, I'm going to address some of that. Yeah. But this is just not we're, we're downsizing the, so. the use of the property, and that's a good you're, thing. Yeah, you're reducing the, <laughs> you're already reducing right. the intensity and the amount of right. impervious coverage. I don't based know why you the, voted against that because the they put a lot APD. more on it without ever having to come to us. So it's better to have less on it, and then deal. Then we'll continue to deal with issues. But let's start with less intensity on the property because if we do nothing, they can put more on there. If they want right? to do the reduction without those other conditions, then that's fine. The conditions that's where come go. But the next coming step. down further. Conditions the next step we'll go to. The conditions are just announced. Well, but those all, no, I, no. If, I, if I read them right, those were all reducing the amount of impervious right. coverage. We're reducing the amount of parking required, reducing the yeah. size of the stalls. So you're actually reducing the amount of impervious coverage that we would require on the site with those variances, which actually reduces your impact of the stormwater system. If you want to separate the reductions first and then go look at that later, because what you're doing when you shrink that up, it actually allows more capacity for buildings to go in while you need to come in. But you're reducing the land use entitlement, sir. I understand. Yeah, you already reduced that. I so. understand that, but by doing these other concessions too, you're allowing more density to come in as well. No, less density. Less. It comes in later. A lot less. I'm, I'm, I, I see the reduction. What I'm saying is, there's a lot it's of all part, part, It's all part of a negotiation. There's, and they won't have to maintain that war. So I mean, that's. I think what Smith was going to put on. So, I, I, but, but again, we've had times before on sensitive flooding areas, we've increased <coughs> Swift Mud's rules and put our own rules into a higher, higher regard. But we don't do that here. We don't do this in this meeting. So, Mr. Mr. Stein Center, would you yeah. comment to that? Sure. So, you've got, you need to take this into consideration with the fact that it, you, that this board in 2012 already gave an approval to this well, site. Well, not this board. Four of us weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> I would never approve it. That's right. It's still the county commission. The commission did it. They get, and so staff needs to review it based on the entitlements that are on this site today. Now, true, if you were dealing with green space in an area of known flooding, on occasion, the county commission has imposed conditions on a plan development mm -hmm. that goes and above and beyond what your code requires. Correct. That's a true statement. But in this case, you're also dealing with the fact that they have a plan of development that they could, in fact, build. So it's, it's the balancing act of those, those two things that you've got to consider with today's here. And then my point is, instead of just, again, pushing this through right now, if we push this through, you're not going to get any conversations. I would love to have those discussions and work with the developer to come in and go study these things now rather than later. I think the time for that is after this, you work with the developer, you work yeah, with Swift and the engineers to get it the right way. way. What they're doing today is going to reduce the amount of You're done with your apartments and everything else on this property. So, Mr. Chairman, if, if I could, and you know, 
I've been on the board a little over four years. I mean, we don't see a lot of these Quiet to where there's this kind of public outreach. Now, let me let me ask staff, is this a base enough special concern in this area? I'm assuming it is. Well, no. Why, why isn't it? Who decides if it is or it isn't? I know the answer, but I'm just asking you. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we know flooding okay, is an so issue. But I'm just, well, I'm just asking the question. So who decides um, where a basin of special concern is in Pasco County? I presume it would be a decision by the Board of County Commissioners. Okay. Okay. I just, again, I, I agree with Commissioner Mariano. If the applicant wants to sit here today and say, listen, I know Swift Mud's going to tell us the minimum's 25-year flood storm is what it needs to be built to, I'm not okay with that. And I'm not going to be okay with that down the road unless the residents are okay with that. Because what happens if we have a 50-year storm? Where does that water go? What, okay, um, who, so, who builds? To, are you saying that this No, but this Swift Mud's expectation is 20, uh, build up to a 25-year storm. And we have made exceptions in the past. We've made a 100-year so, storm on, you know, on We just made years. one this year uh, to, to make them do a 50-year storm. We do usually... Right in Commissioner Moore's district. Okay, so oh, if you want to start getting into the hydrology of CR Pines, we can have staff come up and so you can learn what's more about the issues going on there. But I don't think um, that the time to do that is when you're reducing impacts on a development I, that is already entitled. But I, I would, that's I, what we're I mean, doing today. They can go back and do something else. Well, uh, first of all, in my opinion, Chairman, We've discussed this in the past. We should see west side things on the west side. We should see east side things yeah, on the east I, side. I, I, this should be on the west side. It shouldn't be here, first of all. So I think we need to continue it to the west side. Again, I want to listen to these folks, but obviously they have concerns. Most of the time when I see these, no matter what process timeline we're in, the applicant does a very good job of reaching out to the community. Not, they're not always going to agree, but reaching out to the community. From what I can hear from the community, no one has, which is alarming. Um, but if you said they just, they just came to us with all these issues, then the applicant should have said, listen, I'd like to extend this so we can do the right thing, talk to the neighbors. It's going to make, and I have time to get some questions answered too. Um, I just, I have a lot of questions. Um, like the lowering of park land. How much lowering of park land are we doing to add and that, that wasn't buildings? Specific, that, yeah, that wasn't specific in the, um, the MPD conditions. Um, but but we should, we should know have, what it is if we're going to prove it today. They are going to have lots of connectivity. They're going to have trails. And I love the mudroom. Mudroom's great. They've got it over at Starkey. Um, it, it's awesome. And I think it's going to be great. But again, these folks have a lot of good questions. And I have an issue moving forward. Again, I approve the other side because I kind of do agree that, that I think it was a little threatening the way he said. And I don't think he meant it that way about, hey, we're going to prove these apartments. If not, they're already approved. But that is what it is. Um, I get it, but again, I'm just telling you my opinion on it. I'm, I'm not okay with it. I think we need to continue it to the west side. That's where it should have been in the first place for these folks. Mr. Chairman, yeah. if I may, you're in a process. This was not, if the board ultimately wants to continue this project, that's fine, but you've got, you've got a process that you need to go through. Right. And, yeah. and so I'd let staff go through their, their presentation. I'd let the applicant do their presentation and then listen to public comment. Okay. We're done. We're, we've completed our presentation. Now we'll have. Um, well, Mr. Well, Chair. No, 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 no. Well, well, I have a question about the statement no, was just yet. made so they don't mess up. Mr. Chair. You want to? Question for county attorney. Okay. Because yeah. I know we've dealt with this before. So right. if we go to public comment and people do speak and it is continued we run into the issue before where they couldn't speak um both times so that's that's correct we need to make sure that's no yeah ahead of time. so so generally if if the board takes that goes through public comment closes public comment and the project does not change conditions don't change then they do, you don't have to reopen public comment at the next hearing. So I think that's important, obviously, for the whole, whole the entire board to understand. But I don't know that there, a majority to wants to continue here. either at this well, point. Well, we so. don't know that at this time, but still, I think it's important to the get that note. The only problem would be you're going to go through public hearing and everyone's going to speak, and then the possibility of them speaking to the same item in the future. I understand. We can't. They can't. It doesn't change today. Right. 
So, um, are we going to have the applicant come up? To that, well, it, yes, that would be the next, well, the next thing. I'm going to make have comments, but I'm going to wait until their presentation. Okay. All right. Applicant. Joel, two, two and associates for the applicant. Um, not really sure where to start, but I'll, I'll try. Um, try to tick off the issues. Uh, Mr. Mariano, the concern about why now? This thing was noticed for public hearing in front of the Planning Commission sitting as your local planning agency on the plan amendment. This thing was noticed for public hearing before you. You held a hearing and transmitted the plan amendment. This thing was noticed for public hearing before the Planning Commission on the MPUD, and it recommended unanimously approval with exactly these alternative standards and exactly the MPUD plan. Did not have a negative vote from any of them. Did not have any record objection. Everybody got notice mm -hmm. per your code requirements. Went to DCA, two months, got no objection, no comments. We started seeing letters from Dr. Jessica Greer that were sent not to us but to the county staff a day or two before the 4th of July. We got those letters relayed to us by staff literally Tuesday or Wednesday before the 4th holiday. Okay, that's when we got it. That's when this came up. We've been on consent forever, okay, because there was no objection. No different from any other project, the hundreds that we do and that you see. We powwowed, everybody was out of pocket over the 4th of July weekend. We couldn't find the client to get authority. I had recommended that someone reach out immediately to Dr. Greer to talk about the drainage because that's all that was being put in the letters, okay, was drainage. Monday morning, first thing, we got on a conference call. Client authorized that. His representative called Dr. Greer and reached out and said, look, we understand all the drainage questions. This thing has to go through full drainage review permitting. We're happy to engage you in that process. We're happy to be transparent. We'll hold a charrette with you. If you want to engage a review engineer to review the plans and comment to the county and us, you're welcome to do that. We will engage you in that process. But with all respect, and as you know, I've done a lot of these, mm -hmm. okay, and you've seen a lot of them, it is extremely abnormal to stop the MPUD approval, to impose some drainage condition that you don't have. Right. You don't have an ordinance, you don't have a land development code regulation, you're not a qualified drainage engineer. I, get, I don't know how you would make up that standard today mm -hmm. to impose it on my client, especially when, as Mr. Steinsider's pointed out, we have not only existing plan approval, we have an existing MPUD approval. Now, whether they can build 1,534 apartments or only 1,320, who knows until you engineer it. But the point is, this board approved those apartments. Now, all of a sudden, it's a crazy idea to have density on this property. You put this property in your south market area, in your <coughs> urban service area, and have directed all of us to go bring you mixed-use job creation communities. So what we have brought you is precisely what your south market area, urban service area, says we are supposed to develop on this property per your directive, repeatedly. We brought you exactly that project. And in doing it, we have reduced the current item you don't like. It was the current item before self-storage warehouses. Okay, it was the last previous disliked item. And we've reduced those from 1,534 to 400. So my client does exactly what I stand here twice a month and here you tell me you want to see. We bring it to you. We've had no objection for six months and three public hearings, and now we're the bad guys that the day before the 4th of July this stuff hits, and you don't know why we're on consent. That's disconcerting, just being honest with you. Let me, let me I don't think it. it's fair. Well, let me comment to it. Okay. Because in, in fairness to you, Mr. Tu, um, I have no problem with the explanation I've, I've received about this. And I don't think you have done anything wrong whatsoever. Matter of fact, I know time and time again, you've worked with us continually to try to good, bring projects together after we've suggested things to go <coughs> forward. I'm sure you're surprised as much as we are to see all these people in the audience. Uh -huh. So my concern was knowing just from Sierra Pines, not knowing it was tied right uh -huh. to this, all the flooding that was going on, why it wasn't looked at by staff from seeing it. So, Wait a minute. Hang on, no, no, no. Let me finish. 
So I don't, I don't mean to put you in a bad position. I know you're feeling it today with all these people here saying, what's wrong with my project? I would, I would love to see us take the time to go look and what can we do to improve this the best we can? Uh, with, mm. If I could, to make this go. And I know you've done it before and I know you're being caught flat-footed here and it's, not, it's a tough situation to be in, but you know, would you be able to take the time to go through and maybe let's go take a look at what we can do to improve this all the way through the process. Okay, and that's a fair question, and that's why I opened my very first presentation on the plan amendment by saying that if we do things per the proper course and order in your normal procedure, we will absolutely commit on the record. You can put it as an added condition in the MPUD. You can write it up. We will engage with the county engineer or Mr. Ball's other designee, Swift Mud, the residents, the residents review engineer, we will go through that process and subject ourselves to that. They have a point of entry in that process. If they're not happy with you approving the drainage plans, their lawyer, and they've lawyered up, he has a point of entry to challenge that. If he's not happy with the Swift Mud permit approval, they're going to get a notification. All he has to do is send him a letter and they'll notify him. He has a point of entry. So the short answer is we have no problem engaging in that process. The problem I have is being required to do it completely outside your regulations, mm -hmm. completely outside your policy, mm -hmm. and here's why. We have pending contracts with Lennar to buy those homes and buy those apartments and, and, and the townhomes, and we have a pending contract with closing deadlines contingent only on this approval. So you are going to wreck a project and cause some serious, I mean, these decisions have substantial business repercussions. That's why I stood up here last month and said, I understand this moratorium looks harmless, but to your business community, this is not a good signal. This is another very bad signal to your business community. When they have followed exactly your rules, exactly your requirements, and have reduced their density by half and gotten rid of the thing you don't like, most of the apartments. So why is it not acceptable to have a condition that obligates us to do what we've offered to do, and that is engage in that process with the residents, their engineer, your county engineer. Surely you have confidence in your county engineer if you don't swift mud. Mr. Biles can supervise that. The county can hire a consulting engineer if it wants one. But the fact is we are legally entitled to have the law applied to us that is in force and not something new that on the fly we make up today because there's some objections. Mr. Chairman, and if you don't mind, Joel, I think you know some of the commissioners here, well, probably no one but me, understands what how we've been dealing with the flooding in Sierra Pines. And there was a time before y'all, the last three were elected, that we had a flood coalition, and I, and some of the residents talked about it when we started and. And we peeled off Sierra Pines from that big flood coalition that used to meet regularly with Swift Mud and staff and, and the you know senator staff and every elected official staff. And we now have a, a Sierra Pines uh, coalition. And I would like Will Poon and Mr. Carey to come up and address a little bit about what we've been doing because these are these are. These are separate but related issues that are going on Pardon here. I, I, I would here really, here. I'd really rather to have the applicant conclude that his speak. conclude his presentation, oh, okay. and then, then let me do no, that, okay? Because no, no. They, they're jumping the gun a little bit, and yes. I just want to educate my. That's not the process. All right. No, now, but it'll help. I'll be very brief in wrapping up. Um, and I'll try to take a point. Those individual alternatives that we've asked for. There isn't a single one of those, Mr. Mariano, that isn't entirely consistent with what we did on Long Lake Ranch when I was just in here on that a few months ago. That waiver of that, of that park requirement for the apartments in, in lieu of the current market amenity facilities, you've approved that a half dozen times in the last 12 months. Uh, particularly in this case, because it is uh, a mudderum, we have that required community gathering space. And if you really look at the concept plan, a lot of thought's been put into that. That, that community gathering space is between the office and the apartments. That essentially replaces the function of what would be an internal community park. 
But the advantage is everyone, the single family, the townhomes, the office workers, they all have access to the community gathering space. So why would you require land inside the apartments that only the apartment people can go to if in fact the entire walkable community can share that? The parking is based on statistically what this county has approved <coughs> across the board. So we have not asked for any concession that isn't absolutely the standard that we've had approved on the last six or eight uh, uh, MPUDs that look like this. I understand, and you're real good at it, and I respect you for it, you're real good at playing poker and bargaining and getting those concessions, but in this case, it's not a concession. It actually is the norm of what's been approved. Um, so my frank suggestion is add a condition that affirmatively obligates the engagement on the drainage issue with the drainage review plans, provide those plans to the residents and their engineer. If he wants to comment, we're fine with making that an additional condition, which is completely outside the norm, but we're good with it. And same thing on the buffering. If, if you could delegate to Mr. Biles or his designee that we have to work with them. It's only that one small area on the west side of the townhomes. We'll absolutely look at that. Is it landscaping? Because the truth is, until Lennar engineers that, they may determine they can get their units and provide more buffer. We, we simply don't, but we're certainly willing to work in good faith with transparency on, on what can be done on that buffer issue to get staff comfortable on the site plan and absolutely to meet the drainage requirements. I, I work Timber Oaks, you know that. Oh, I know. I know did. the problem. You did a great job. Okay. And it, it is, the, the problem is, however they got there, they purchased in the bowl, it's in the floodplain, the world develops around it, it is a difficult problem. But I don't think you can legally or fairness or business wise punish someone who's not in there. You can't keep them from developing their property in accordance with legal regulations today, so long as what they do does not harm them. You're absolutely correct. We all know they can't, we can't increase the quantity of discharge or the rate of discharge from our property. We simply can't do it. It's unlawful. Mr. Two, I greatly appreciate your attitude and your, your, your uh, knowledge of this whole, whole scenario. Um, as the NPD comes through, if we get a good look at it coming through, we get our engineers involved, if they can have their engineers, that gives me a lot of comfort to make the next step. Well, forward. absolutely do that. And, and I do know that all the yeah, yeah, things yeah, in there are all good things to go put in for those conditions. I just didn't want to give up any chips and I appreciate as we go that. forward. And, and I, I do promise so. that you have, we have nothing in there that hasn't been approved by this board on multiple projects. And I would like to say what you've drawn out here is function as far as where you're linking your drainage, drainage is a good start too. So I appreciate it. Thank you. We, we promise that we'll do that. Okay. Okay. And that's I, just for the record, because there's opposition, I just want to incorporate our present, I believe it's part of the record, but our presentation at Planning Commission, LPA, uh, my presentation on the plan amendment, I don't want to have to put all that back in a record in case somebody challenges this. So we incorporate uh, the staff reports. Obviously, they found it consistent with your plan. Uh, they found it compatible with the comprehensive plan. Uh, and, and I think there's more than adequate uh, credible evidence in the record from the staff reports, the agency reports, and our submittals uh, to support the approval. I'm going to shut up. We respectfully encourage you. <laughs> we, re we really need the MPUD approved now to deliver the project. That's our problem. I'm going to hold you there. For Chairman, you. Joel, so real quick, I, the, the, <laughs> reason, the reason I'm, Again, and I appreciate you saying that. This is the last time we're going to see this. We approve this today. We're done. It's not coming back to us. Because so, it's delegated. But I get, and again, I owe it to the residents to, to who I work for to make sure I ask the questions. That I just, if, if that's going to be part of the motion is to include that and make sure, again, we've seen special circumstances that I've seen two oh, we've all been I've there. Been here that we've done to make sure because obviously they're impacted. Obviously, you know, again, they're all here for a reason. We don't, again, I don't see a lot of these probably the fifth one I've seen since I've been here. I so agree. I take it seriously. I know you do too. I respect you, but sometimes, you know, again, I just want to be on the record because again, we're done after today. It's not coming back to us. No, you are. And I appreciate too that no, you and Mr. Mariano are concerned about this. I have no problem with one of you because I know you both can at the same time. If one of you wants to sit in on those discussions, review that, we're, we're, we welcome you to do that. We welcome anyone's input who's concerned because obviously my client wants to, my client intends to do no harm to anyone. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, Ms. Starkey? No, I'll, I'll wait till public comment time. 
Wait till the end. Well, wait a minute. We'll call, <laughs> we'll call for public comment. She's moved from that road. All right, we have people signed up for public comment, and we will address that now. All right. So um, we do have many people signed up. I'll call them out three deep. So if you don't mind standing um, in line, will so you that, will you explain again? There's one opportunity to speak. How does this work? Well, well we don't know if, the answer to that. So. Right. It, it, well, if the board continues this matter at at the end okay. at, after a closed public know. hearing, yeah. then they wouldn't have an opportunity unless the board reopened the public hearing at the next okay. next and the board. Well, sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. Right. Here's the other side of the story is too, there's a lot of you for here for the same reason. If you pick two or three or four people that are going to say the same thing you're going to say, you can shorten this matter a little bit just by them saying what you're going to say anyway. We appreciate each and every one to say, and you have the right to stand up and speak. So with that, we'll call off the first three, and then we'll go from there. All right, um, Jess Stempine, sorry, Stepine. All right, um, Nadine Ferguson, and I think it's uh, Alberta Band, Brand? Sorry. Go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Jess Stempine, 1102 Wildwood Lane, Lutes, Florida. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit and, about history. And on these, you have no, to say you have you've to been say sworn. You've been sworn. Oh, I am sworn. Okay. Is that correct? Yes. That is correct. Okay. If you took, if when the is my time stopped? I just yes. To yes. When, so for the record, when, name, address, and if you've been sworn. sworn. Is this? Do portion? I have to start over? No. Okay. We're good. Just That's for the record, just check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history uh, for everyone's um, benefit. In 2011, the Pace uh, Anclo East Watershed Management Plan was completed. And from my understanding, our entire neighborhood, Meadowbrook Estate, Sierra Pines, was included in a basin of special concern. And that model, the PACE model, and the watershed management plan was supposed to be used to assess the development impacts. And then from my learnings today, uh, in 2012, the MPUD uh, was approved for that piece of property. So I'm kind of curious how that was able to happen. Um, in that same plan, in the basin of special concern, there were uh, flood-prone areas, and there were four of those areas that were within our neighborhood. One of them abutted the area of the development. When I went and looked in that, to the current comprehensive plan that you guys have, and I looked at the maps of flood-prone areas, I did not see those areas. So that's concerning to me. The only areas I see are Sierra Pines. I do not see the flood-prone areas that abutted the, the development that's being proposed. Um, I also wanted to reiterate that we're concerned about the wetlands. Wetlands H, J, and N are the ones that are being proposed to be filled in, but on that input plan, the map that uh, Dr. Greer gave you, the wetland on the southeast corner is not being shown as being filled in. So we're, we're concerned about those discrepancies. Um, also, from my understanding, the residents that abut the development got a letter from, from Height Consulting, from Army Corps, from Bowler Engineering, and Bowler Engineering, I think, only said that we had 15 days to respond to their site, their preliminary site plans. That's concerning to us because we are, you know, a neighborhood that we, we don't have our own engineer yet. So what I'm asking today is that you give us time to find our own engineer so that we can when we have the meeting with the developer, have our engineer there to represent us. Otherwise, we feel like we're not going to be well re represented. So those are the points that I wanted to make, and thank you. Nadine Ferguson, um, I believe you have my address already. I was already sworn in. Um, to the gentleman that was here before, I'm offended by your indignation. This is a job for you, this is my home. I don't care about land values. I'm here the long haul. My kids have instructions to bury me in the back. So I'm a little upset right now. They're already talking about shrinking the size of parking. Let's make this smaller. That is density. They want to put more people in a smaller area. If they think they can build 1,500 apartments, let them choke on them. I don't think they can sell them. I want to see the plan that has the 1,500 apartments. I ask you, as our representatives, you haven't seen these plans. I haven't seen these plans. He's saying they have to be engineered. How are we buying this car that we have not looked at? How are we going to approve this when I don't have details to go with it? We are only asking for more time. 
Give us three months. Let us hire our own engineer. Make them choke out the plans. Let's have a review of facts. That way you don't get my emotion. You don't get our indignation. Why are we here right now? This is the public process. He should not be annoyed we showed up. We're supposed to show up. We're supposed to be able to comment on our land, our business, our community, my neighbors. Damn it, we live here. So I'm a little annoyed right now that he's annoyed because we showed up. We're supposed to show up. So I ask you, can we please have more time? If this development dies because you continued this for 90 days while we get some time to look at it, something that will affect all of our lives, then this process, or should I say, this development wasn't worthwhile in the first place. They're just ramming it through. It's a waste of time, money, it's gonna destroy the area. Let's give this proper thought. That's all I ask. Thank you, Mayor. Alberta Brand. Lisa Sloan, followed by uh, Scott Fitzpatrick, followed by Jessica Greer. Go ahead Lisa, and line up behind them, please. Lisa Sloan, 17135 Gunlock Road. I've been sworn in. Um, I feel like we are already a mixed a use job creation land site. We have not only homeowners, but business owners that operate businesses out of their communities. So we. Let's, let's give some consideration to, to where desirable in, in some uh, extent. And um, I heard that pausing to give consideration is being referred to as an abnormal process, but I would submit to you we have a very abnormal situation here, the special basin of concern. I appreciate the sentiments expressed by Mr. Mariano and Mr. Wells that could we not give this more consideration given the level of concern and the fact that people are showing up to express this at this point. I think there were one or two people that got letters, but I think most of us heard about this in the recent weeks, and we simply want some opportunity to press pause before proceeding. I think we're dealing with an extremely abnormal situation, and so an abnormal time period is not abnormal here. It's specific to the situation. I think it's somewhat ludicrous to say because we gave assent in 2012 to something that we have to proceed in 2018 knowing what we know now. Like we're blind to the deterioration that's happened and the unintended consequences that all the people in the room have experienced. Um, we just want to time to address it in a thoughtful manner um, rather than just proceeding because way back in 2012 we said, okay, let's move forward. That may have seemed like a sound decision at that time, but Given what we've experienced and what we're sharing with you now, it seems very unsound. The references to good faith and transparency, they don't ring true for me. I, I've not experienced, we've not been well served by the process that has been in place. So thank you for expressing some opportunity to give consideration that maybe we need to pause and maybe we need to give this a, a kind of a different treatment than before. Thank you. Good afternoon again. Thank you, Scott Fitzpatrick. Um, do I need to state my address again for the record? Yes. 811 yes. Cypress yes. Village Boulevard, Ruskin, Florida, 33573. I'm going to be brief. And have you been sworn? I have been sworn. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I, uh, I want to incorporate my arguments I made earlier in agenda item P2, if I may, to, in the interest of time. Um, I also want to say that to you that you know, these people have said it all. And I, I would just ask for a raise of hands if you live in the Sierra Pines or Meadowbrook subdivisions. And I'd ask for a, a show of hands if you received correspondence from a developer, from an engineer, from the county, from anyone. So I think that goes to the heart of some of the questions that commissioners were asking. So due process has not been given here and, and adequate notice has not been given. I think it goes to the heart of what we're asking for. We are respectfully requesting under these circumstances that you delay taking action in regards to this project until my client's concerns are addressed and their engineers are, and advocates are given fair opportunity to weigh in on the development efforts um, on their, com on their communities and neighborhoods. And I, I thank you for all, for all your time today. I know we've taken up a lot of it and I know you've got a lot of weight on your shoulders and I'm glad that you get to make these decisions and not me. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I've been
been sworn in. My name is Dr. Jessica Greer. I live at 17324 Rain Tree Road in Lutz, Florida. Um, I would just like to go on record um, that uh, we received the Army Corps and Engineer letter, a uh, public notice on June 25th, 2019. Um, that had the link to the online map that I showed you, so we were not aware of the drastic impact. I'm only one of two of the 20 houses that you will have be to drastically speak. affected, two of the 20 houses that will be drastically affected um, with our value of our property, flooding. We have Cypress Swamp that is on our property with a barn adjacent that we're gonna have horses and goats and chickens, and currently that looks like that won't be able to happen. Um, I would also like to go on record that I work over 60 hours a week, okay, um, and I am on call every sixth day, not to mention every sixth weekend. I cannot make these hearings. I took a loss at my practice today to come and take off PTO time to be here um, and had to reschedule patients and come up very early. Um, I think that this development itself threatens not only the neighborhood of flooding also threatens wildlife. I was the only person that responded to my email was someone named Tammy. I'm sorry, I don't have service. I don't know her last name, but Tammy sent a list of the questions and said there is no ecological corridor that needs to be behind my property and the minimum required that is planned is 15 feet. This will not only devalue my property, it, it, decreases our privacy. We, we have we have spent over $60,000 on our house renovating an entire back, um, back porch that we like to look over. I don't want to see one story, two story townhomes only 15 feet from my property line. I don't want to raise my future children in an area that is potentially going to be impacted by this. Do I have another minute? Yes. Another Sorry. Minute. Yes, um, okay. Um, but I was not, I don't think, adequately informed. I don't feel that our residents, the only reason we were all able to get, get together is because Jessica um, <coughs> was able to contact us on the Next Door app. That's the only reason we've all been able to get together to discuss what's actually happening. No one knew the plans. You guys haven't seen these plans that are coming up. I think we all need to press pause on this project. And I apologize that your developers are going to have an impact, but this, this, is, this is what... Isn't this what our commissioners are supposed to do is protect the rights of the people and protect our land and our value while we moved here? No, 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 no. Uh, please. Sorry. Quiet, please. All right, um, the next three are Scott Sloan, Dennis Kite, and Diane Konitz. So Diane, is that correct? Um, again, I'm Scott Sloan, 17135 Gunlock Road in Loops. Um, I object to the plans that are happening here. You were sworn in. I was sworn in. Okay. So I object to the plans that have been presented here about building uh, a, a, another structure around this fishbowl that we have. One impact that hasn't been mentioned here is that the development of apartments and gas stations bring in more crime. Crime will raise in our area because of these. So we will have properties that are now flooded that we can't sell and we'll have more of a crime area. The lawyer previously was quite indignant that we would even object to the plans that were previously approved. Can I, I just wanna know who approved those plans back in 2012. Can we get a name because we, I was told by somebody inside your facility that we don't know how those plans were approved. It's kind of a mystery. So we want to know who approved those plans. It's public record. You can look it up, public record. I mean, we, most of us weren't here, but it's public record. He also brought up that you guys are not drainage experts. But I'm pretty sure that if I ask the audience here, which way does water run, they're going to say downhill. That property that's going to be built will be higher than ours. The property two down at Land, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Long Lake Ranch, that property is above 54. That means those properties that get water are now shifting it down into our area. And we have no recourse to move it out. Our rights as Americans are taken away 
when your amendments say we can't protect our property. If there were three things in the Bill of Rights, it was the pursuit of life, liberty, and property. They changed that. I bet you didn't know that. They changed it to happiness. So we can conclude that happiness and property are one and the same. When we're not happy because of our property, that is, it, 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 you guys are just taking our rights away. Thank you. Thank you. Is Dennis Kite here? Okay. That's the record reflect there's um, no one stood. And also, uh, Diane Konitz uh, has withdrawn to speak on P12. We have. Um, Please call both so they both mm. they line up. There's only uh, two left on this, so yep. um, we have, I don't know his first name, but Mr. Kennedy and Amanda Grayson. And then if anyone else wants to speak, could they line up behind that? Because we, we have five more issues like this to go, so we got a, we got a lot to go through today. So, so just name, address, and if you've been sworn. Thank you. Patrick Kennedy, 17320 Rain Tree Road, Boots, Florida. Um, I have been sworn in. Um, so I, 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 the council for the developer made a statement that um, 15, over 1,500 um, apartments have already been approved. Um, and some, uh, some presumptions were made that the current plan re would reduce the impact because we're going from 1,500 down to 700. Uh, I, I would argue that's a presumption because we still haven't seen any plans for a 1,500 unit complex. Um, I worked in multifamily before. I've seen 500 units go on 20 acres. So if you uh, say 1,500 units across 60 acres, that still leaves 100 acres open uh, to accept drainage, to accept uh, whatever else. Uh, if you look at the current uh, proposed plan, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of pavement uh, on here. So that could eat up a lot more uh, of, for this drainage issue. So I appreciate uh, the, these issues being brought up. Um, my wife was also one of those people that sent on July 2nd or 3rd to Tammy Snyder, uh, sent an email. She did not receive a call back. Uh, she did receive an email back from Tammy saying 15 feet is what's uh, allotted as a setback. We're not asking again that the townhomes not be built. We're asking the same privilege that everybody above us were given on the setback of green space and or retention ponds to set the properties back the townhomes. Again, we're not saying don't build the townhomes, we're saying set them back, give us some space. Um, and I could uh, submit some things showing flooding. I think it's a moot point at this point, so I, I won't do it. My property was built in 79. Neighbors on either side were built later. They were built above me. And these townhomes would also be built above me, which leaves me at the bottom. Um, I can send all, all of you uh, videos and pictures showing my entire backyard, one acre, um, covered in water, uh, almost knee deep in water. Um, and my kids have to stay inside for weeks until that drains. Um, so we're asking that you guys review this. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Um, Amanda Grayson. Uh, I'm her husband. Okay. I have not been sworn in. Okay, please raise your right hand. No, I... Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, my name is Brandon Grayson. I live at uh, 17360 Riverstone Drive. Um, one, one thing that we haven't addressed that I per have a personal preference for is looking at the stars. Who's addressed the light pollution that we're going to experience as neighbors? Um, uh, something that's unique to my, my wife and I um, is the, um, there's a, in the picture that we were sent um, to the proposed plans, there's a, a, a corporate building with a parking lot adjacent to our property uh, right there on 54. Um, the, the only thing that I am going to lovingly say um, in my testimony is that in Matthew 22, Jesus said that the um, greatest two commandments were love thy God um, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
And the second commandment was love your neighbor as yourself. I ask you as our commissioners, if you lived in this neighborhood, what would you want done for you? Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. thank you. <laughs> Do you need to be sworn? Yes, okay. swear me in, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? Yes. Okay. My name is John Herring. My address is 7650 Bayshore Drive, Treasure Island. My secondary residence is 17255 Green Tree Grove. I have three photographs of the property that is in question. Can I present them to the clerk? If you present them, they will we'll keep them as part of the record. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll proceed in final. Is there a second? Got a motion? Second. second. Got a motion or second? Clerk. All those in favor say aye. 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 Do you want aye. them? Thank aye. you. Does he want them shown? Does he want them shown? Those photographs, and I, I'm not yeah, sure. sending any blame to the county, but that, that is a picture of a swale that is on the property in question. And when 54 was expanded, for some reason, that swale has been blocked off to drain into the ditch on 54. Now, this is an engineering problem, so obviously engineering things can be overlooked. Uh, if that swale is filled with four feet of dirt, how is that going to drain? And uh, I just ask that you consider that you uh, check into the engineering uh, plans and to uh, consider in not filling in drainage that exists on this property. And thank you. Thank you. Um, Dexter Bernie, 17324 Rain Tree Road. I have been sworn in. Okay. Uh, Mr. Starkey, Commissioner Starkey, I appreciate your statements about wanting to move things along, but this is our life. This is, this is why we are here. Um, sometimes days run long. If I get called in the operating room, I apologize my entire, then that's, that's a long day for me. And that's just the, that's the way that that is. I don't get to abandon my patients or abandon my people because I'm having a long day. Okay. As far as to our lawyer who mentioned the fact that we have lawyered up, what else can we do here? Like, what do you expect us to do? We're a small, we have a coalition of people. Of course, we're gonna, we have to fight on your ground. If you wanna come to, the, to our ground and come to the hospital, we can talk on my terms, but we're on, your, we're on your plane, so we need to do things by your set of rules. So we have to get a lawyer because we don't speak this language. If you want me to talk to you about aortic valve replacements all day long, I can, but you're not gonna understand that. So we have to have a lawyer, that's why we're here. Okay, I understand a lot of the issues of the flooding. I haven't had a lot of experience with it as it's our second year here that we came to raise our family um, and have a family. You've met my wife, Dr. Greer. Um, we paid over half a million dollars for our home uh, just last year, and we've since put over $60,000 into renovating it. And I understand that, um, that this land's gonna be used. We understood that when we moved here. We understood that there was a giant field that was beautiful and it was all gonna go away. But never in our wildest dreams could we have imagined a wall of multi-story townhomes 15 feet from our property. Never could we have imagined that. And in fact, as she may have mentioned, we called the real estate agent who tried to buy the land to which we were scoffed at and told it would be $500,000 an acre, despite the fact that if you did $20 million divided by the 163 acres, you would never have reached $500,000 an acre. That's simple math. So it wasn't that they were going to just try to give us a portion of it. We would have happily bought it in addition with our neighbor, the Kennedys. Uh, we were not afforded that because we were told it would be $500,000 an acre, at which point we were also told that uh, there would, that not to worry, don't worry, there's going to be a really long wildlife easement and you're not going to have to worry about any of this stuff. I think it's fair to say that we know something's going to be built there. It's not our property. Build, do whatever you want. But I think it's fair to say that our property value will be greatly impacted by having a full wall from one end to the other of two multi-story townhomes. Um, and that we would like, and as, again, they mentioned there's only two houses affected. Here's one of them, one of those people that are affected. And I think it would be reasonable, at least, we cannot stop the development. We understand there's going to be something developed. But unfortunately, we're one of those two houses. And we think it would be reasonable to at least mitigate our property line as well as all of the other property lines along Meadowbrook have been mitigated um, to help uh, increase our privacy and keep our property value growing like it's supposed to, like, like we want and our community is growing. Those, that community is growing. The property values are going up all the time. It's bringing people like us, young professionals coming in. We want it to stay that way. Thank you. Thank you. 
Quick. Quick Any, staff anyone else to speak? Questions? No one. We'll close public hearing. All right, um, could I have staff? Mr. Carballa come up, Donald Carey come up, Will Poon come up. Um, as they're coming up, I want to address the gentleman who's concerned about light pollution. I don't remember where he is, but uh, yeah, back in my civic activism days, I worked on the lighting ordinance, and you're not allowed to have lights that shine up to protect the, the night sky. So Pasco County is very unique in that way that when you drive around, you'll notice all the lights are shining down, mm -hmm. and we have a restriction on the foot candles so that they don't Commissioner blow out the stars. Question she wants us to um, I just didn't know. So first, uh, Mr. Carballa, is this a basin of special concern? Mike Carballa, Assistant County Administrator, Public Infrastructure. No, it is not. Okay, so it's not a basin of, of special concern. It is an area of special concern to me, your commissioner, and all these commissioners, but it is not a basin of special concern. Um, Let you me know. ask you a question, Commissioner. So with the pay study, the pay study designated any areas that I they have thought? No, I'm not familiar with that, okay. and um, we didn't finish the, so hey, I'm Carey, gonna let I'm Donald Carey introduce yeah, yourself Donald. and who you are, and Will Poon speak to the, oh, some I've of the never, issues. I've never met him before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Donald Carey, Engineer 3 Public Works. And do you need to know whether I've been sworn? Yes. I have not been sworn. Okay, we'll swear Have you, Will? Right Actually, I, well, so I guess staff doesn't have to be sworn, but. Oh, sworn. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. Yeah. He's hopefully you're gonna tell the truth anyway. That's right. That's right. Uh, zoom out a little, okay. There are there are three by code. There are three designated basins of special concern. This is not one of them. And as has been previously mentioned, the basins of special concern are as determined by you, the board. Okay. And um, and do we we have a Sierra Pines coalition? Yes. And we have been meeting for how many years now? I, approximately two years. Yeah. So we have um, and and Jesse had. Uh, Jess heads that, and she's representing you extremely well. So, um, and I know many of you, many others of you, come to those meetings. And those are public meetings, so anyone can attend those meetings. And we do it at the utilities office. So we have been trying to um, deal with flooding, very serious flooding that's going on in Sierra Pines. There's no doubt about it. Um, and you know, I remember this area, and don't, I, I'm going to wax a little bit, but I want you guys to jump in. I've been dealing, I, you know, I've lived here now almost 30 years, and I remember when the rodeo was up here off 54, and my husband had to get a tractor from our ranch down the street to come pull the people out when it rained because it was so wet, people got stuck. This area has been wet forever, and it was even wet when we were over pumped. And um, for those of you who are new to Pasco County, uh, when we were, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, we were pumped dry. Our lakes on our ranch dried up. It was an environmental catastrophe. And so you have a well field to your right, and I don't know, my commissioners know this, but this is a well field owned by the city of St. Petersburg. Um, and, and, and what's kind of funky here too is that the water drains out of here and goes north, and it goes under the sun coast, under 54, under the Sun Coast, is that South Branch Ranch? South Branch goes under the Sun Coast yeah. and then 54. Sandy Branch goes directly under 54 and then the Sun Coast. Okay, yeah, that one. So, um, so it's got two, two ways it's, it's draining. Um, and, and this area, if you, could, if you could put a map up that doesn't have any of those roads so you could see it, you, you'll see that Sierra Pines was built long before there were the required storm system, storm water system. So they don't have really, right? I'm, I mean, I'm speaking your language, but That's explain, the, explain some of the hydrology of Sierra Pines. Well, the, the, uh, the plat upon which this was built was uh, not recorded and did not have drainage easements and there were, the, the drainage system is, <coughs> is insufficient. Yeah, so it's, it's a little, uh, no offense, I, I know y'all love, love the rural nature of this and I get why you chose there, but you picked a community that has kind of made up its own drainage system uh, house by house. Some of you have built lakes, some of you have dug ditches, some of you have filled in your wetlands, some of you have cemented over your 
culverts that are in the ditches. It's a, it's a mixture of a lot of things going on out there. Is that fair? So. Well, I, I cannot speak to some of that. Okay, so, uh, so we, we're working piece by piece to, to help the water flow out of here. Uh, one of the first things we did was have with uh, FDOT, we went under the Sun Coast, and uh, frankly, there were trees growing in the culverts under there. It was horrible. So um, we've been working to, to fix the hydrology in here, but, but it's not Smith 54's responsibility to fix the woes of Sierra Pines. It is Smith 54's responsibility to not make it worse and what we have seen in the past is when some of these developments come in, and most of it, you know, we're, we look at these with such strong engineering eyes now that we, we get extra storage. Um, we free, I can't, I'm not saying that's happening here. We, we don't even know yet. But frequently, we, we get extra storage to help the, na the neighbors that have problems downstream. This is not that big a property. I don't know if there's any room for extra storage. but. Um, they, they, by law, cannot put more water into your neighborhood. So, so I wanted to lay, lay that out. And I wanted to, you commissioners to know that the county staff and, and the resident commissioner are working really hard to find, and SWIFMA, John Kawanda's in here all the time, working on solutions um, to help them. So, uh, and this, what we're looking at today, I know they, they want us to pause, but this is a reduction. This is a reduction in the use of this property. I am a little concerned, Mr. Tu, um, about this plan, but as far as, this is conceptual. Where's Joel? So this is a conceptual plan, correct? This is not the final plan by any means, and you're hearing, and I, I get it, the, th those, Townhome, is that what those are? Those are townhomes there? Townhome so, sure. you know, I'm sure all the commissioners would really appreciate if you could work, well, it won't even be your clients. And, well, whoever ends up with this, they need to know, and we need to let them know, all of us, we want to try and fix that. And I think there's wiggle room in there that we could get some space in there. If one of your responsible developers, this is in our homes, it's yeah. a secret, and they do a lot of business with you, and I'm sure that they right. will make a strong and, effort to... And I will personally call the CEO of Lennar and, and work on that. I mean, it's two lots that we're really affecting here, and there's got to be a way that we can we can help them there. So um, it's it's my hope that, that this ends up being an asset to, to you, and I know you... You, those of you who think you're living in the country will feel otherwise when you see this next to you. But Sun Coast and 54 is not the country. You have, once we get your, once we get your drainage program fixed, you will have a little gem because you will have kind of like uh, what Odessa is in Hillsborough County. You will have what is a really rural feel in a, one of the most important areas of Pasco County. So. I think, I think if we can get this worked wow. out, it'll be to, to your great advantage. And I pledge to you um, that we will keep working and peeling away the problems that are in your neighborhood. We also need some cooperation from some of you. It's some, some of the neighbors in there are not letting the county clean some of the ditches that are blocking some of you. So um, we'll, we'll keep working on that. And, um, but I, I I think Quiet, we need please. to move this forward because I think this actually is better than a more intense use that they can come in with and I think it could potentially help fix some of the issues and I think they've got um, some good things that are coming in here that the county, looking at the big picture, is really looking forward to. So, so that's, that's where I feel. Mr. 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 Chairman. And, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, one more thing. Will, we, Will and I talked before the meeting, and when, when the applicants' plans are more set and engineering looks at them, we will have another community meeting. I will come out, and, or you can come to the county. Will um, will run that meeting. And Donald, are you involved with that too, or? I don't know. I can certainly make myself available. 
Okay, and um, well, can you explain that process to the residents? Because I know um, someone <coughs> was trying to reach you and said they couldn't reach you. So. And Will Poon, PE, current planning. Uh, as you had mentioned earlier, I mean, it's, it is under review, and so we're still in the process of providing comments and so forth. And we have received uh, citizens' uh, emails, phone calls, and we've taken those into consideration as part of our review. And also, I'm working with the um, Stormwater Department as part of our review process. Um, I've also been in correspondence with the applicants, engineers, and so forth. And, and part of that, as you had mentioned earlier, is to provide a community meeting so that we can all look at the plans, address the, the con drainage concerns, and so forth. And with the community, their engineers, and the applicants, engineers, and, and, and current planning, I think we'll be all together to work collaboratively together to address and assist. Uh, Hopefully addressing those concerns. So, so let me ask you a question as the commissioner of, of these folks, and they want to have their own engineers' eyes on this. Um, can, you know, what's that time frame? I mean, I want to be, I, if they want that, I want them to be able to have an engineer look at these plans. So, well, the, what's that kind the of The plans frame? have been submitted, so they're actually um, public records. So, you can access uh, the, we, I, I've sent some uh, links to some of the citizens who, who email me and so forth that can access the plans, the drainage calculations, and geotechnical report, et cetera. So, I mean, those are available. I mean, obviously, you can still contact us as current planning. If you want us to send you information, we can definitely do that. So, there are, it's available right now. But they what's can, your time frame for approval? And what, well, what? I mean, it's rounds of comments, and right now okay. we're under round one, and I have not issued, or we have not issued any comments as, we, as yet. So, so well, still they don't here. understand. So, what, round one, how much time does the applicant have to come Te back? Technically, it's 180 days to respond, 180 days. To, respond to our comments. Um, so, they, have they can respond quicker right. than that. That's yeah. their right. maximum yeah. response time. Okay. Yes, right. correct. Can, which they could so choose to respond to. I, I would like their um, engineer to quickly be able to engage yes. as well. Yes. We've been, always been in correspondence with the engineers and, and phone calls and so forth, so. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, wow, the mic got loud then. Um, so a couple things. Um, I think the best thing for the citizens that happened is that they did come up in with an amendment. And I'll say that because if they didn't come in for an amendment, we wouldn't all be sitting here today. They could have just built. That's a fact. I mean, that is reality and that is a fact. So this obviously gave you an opportunity and now we're able to have these discussions that we normally would not be able to have because of that. Um, there is a process to appeal a site plan or oppose a site plan. Um, yes. Right. Yeah, there so, is. Yeah. There is. So, but, but if the site plan meets right. code and right. the and the mm -hmm. zoning ordinance, right. there's nothing this board right. can do about it. But I, yes, it does not come to this board. But I wanted to make sure they understood that it would go to um, um, planning commission. Planning commission, um, if there was an appeal of that. So there is a process for that. Um, let me just go back to a, a discussion we had earlier of of a concern I do have which is, and Commissioner Starkey did bring it up, which is the buffering, and, and Joel, um, the buffering of those two lots that I'm looking at I mean, right on, on the south. You can't really get pointed out on the screen, but you know which ones I'm talking about, right? Yes, the western, so, the western boundary of the, excuse me. Correct. Uh, Joel, the western okay. boundary of the town hall parcel. So going back to, um, you know, again to our discussion we had earlier and there's been instances and Commissioner Wells actually mentioned an instance where um, during the process we did um, change that and increase the buffering. Um, I, I do feel for them to have that, that close. I mean 15 foot is, is really tight. I mean that's really tight. Um, and then we mentioned you'd be um, okay with a condition, you know, to add a condition that we could look at that closer. but. At the same time, I just want to have some confidence that we're going to be able to do that. Well, I think uh, my suggestion is if you delegate that to Mr. Bowser as designee in the site planning process, the reason we can't tell you how much more they can do is as they engineer and specifically lay out those townhomes, there may be a just, for example, there may be some other alternative standard that they could ask staff to approve that, if approved, would allow the creation of a greater buffer. 
So, you know, there, there are things that could be adjusted. So it's hard to stand here and say we can do X when I know for a fact that Lennar has not yet engineered that. <coughs> but our commitment is if you delegate that authority to Mr. Biles or his designee, then if it's in a condition, the MPUD, then you have a hook, if you will, that that's got to be worked out. I mean, they're not going to get that site plan approved until they get Mr. Biles or his designee to say, yeah, we're satisfied that that's the best you can do there. And we've looked at all the different alternatives and configurations and we're providing maximum, but we'll tell you without, we'll, we'll absolutely tell you that we will in any event enhance the buffering, plantings, berm, whatever distance ends up being agreed to, that we will also enhance that. I understand you know, unfortunately, you have that, that that's one of the three developable parcels when you look at, at the land. So it's got to be developed. Now, I understand it happens to hit two people. Uh, it, it, it's horrible for the two it hits. It, it, it doesn't hit the other 20, but, it, you know, it, know, it's just the best you can do. But we will minimize that impact. And we, we trust uh, Mr. Biles and his that's planning staff to, uh, to use reasonable discretion to do that. And we'll work with them. We have no reason so not to maximize that, uh, provided that we can lay out the project and get and get those units. Okay. So, Joel. So I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at the at the parcel here. Um, if I have it correct. So, oh, well, oh, <laughs> I was looking at it <laughs> until it just went dead. There we go. Thank you. Um, so the stormwater ponds. The conceptual plan show the, the multiple ponds, and one of them is on the north side of the townhomes and one lies to the east side of that. So those are, again, conceptual. Um, so I think we would have some room to shift some things around. As long to, as they have uplands, right, as long as they have uplands that they can move, it's, it's all, as you know, a zero-sum game. You've got to take care of the drainage. We understand that's probably priority number one. And that's, a, that's a priority. Again, and, priority and, for... Drainage is a priority for some, and then obviously the buffering is a priority for others. And we'll yeah. do our best to accommodate both and still get the yield that's needed for that town hall parcel. It's just you can't stand here and do it without the engineering. So my suggestion is that we delegate to those who are professionally trained to do it and whom we trust. And, uh, you know, we're not going to get a site plan signed off on if we don't get that buy-in from staff. Right. So, and, you know, it's the same thing to us. If, if Mr. Biles hard times us and we think he's unreasonable, our only relief is we also have to appeal that site plan to the Planning Commission. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's just the way it we works. Work it, now, we all work it out, and we don't usually have to do that. Okay. So yeah. let me go to Mr. Biles, and <laughs> since you've been mentioned. Who's sitting quietly. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, so, person, this is me. Um, I would like to see us add that condition that we could increase that buffering along those two parcels. Um, you know, we're going to need to come up with a number, though, too. So I can give you direction now to look at that closely, but that's just looking at it. You know, you with me? So I think we, it can we, be done. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah, it can be done, it. too. Um, but, but we need to increase, increase that. Um, when I say buffering, not we're just putting trees up. We need to space that out a little bit. So it's difficult to give me, yeah. me to give you direction and your team to look at that when I don't, when I'm not able to give a number. Well, I agree, and I don't think, because we don't have design plans, it's hard to come up with a number that would actually still right. work on the site. So right. I'm not sure how you can give me a number today other than work you know. with the developer to maximize that buffer as best you can based on the conditions of the site. But I, don't, I can't put a number to that. Today I know. That's, without, that's, without that's, plans. Well, you know. I mean, I, I think he's at, at, well, at a minimum, I need it. I mean, I'd love this. At minimum, I would like to see that doubled. At minimum. But, you know, Joe, I'm going to, you know, in, to the applicant, I'm going to have to throw a number out and then say at least a minimum to make that a condition. Or it's not a, it's not a true condition. Right. So, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Yes, the chief assistant has drafted a condition that the, that the applicant hasn't seen, but since we still have rebuttal for the applicant, I'm sure he'll note his displeasure if it's not something he can live with. Um, 
The applicant, applicant agrees to provide additional buffering along the western boundary of the MQD adjacent to the two existing homes as determined by the county administrator or designee at the time of PSP slash PDP approval. Uh, the applicant agrees to submit a buffering plan for the western boundary to the owners of the two existing homes for comments at least 60 days prior to the date of PSP slash PDP approval. Um, and there's another condition that we have drafted. Mr. Stockton, I'm sorry, and co comments from the homeowners. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking I'm for comments at least 60 days prior okay. to the date of approval. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one I did get printed out so that you can take a look at it. Um, this would be a modification to number 61 of the existing conditions. The developer shall submit a stormwater management plan and report to each development phase or increment in accordance with the Pasco County LDC as amended. New language, the stormwater management plan and report shall also be submitted by certified mail return receipt requested to each of the Sierra Pines residents that spoke at the July 9th, 2019 public hearing for the MPUD, as well as any attorneys or engineers representing such residents, collectively the Sierra Pines parties. The applicant agrees to provide the Sierra Pines parties at least 90 days to review and provide comments to the stormwater management plan and report, and agrees to incorporate any comments received from the Sierra Pines parties into the stormwater management plan and report provided that such comments do not require the applicant to exceed the standards referenced in, section, in conditions 62 through 64 below. Plans shall be approved by the county prior to, to or simultaneously with the application for PSP or PDP review for the development phase slash increment in question. No design for individual increment slash phase prior to the or portion of, of an increment of phase shall de be dependent upon ultimate construction of the future increment slash phases unless the interim design for the drainage is approved by the Zoning and Site Development Department. Where's, where's the buffer? Where's the buffer? No, that, this is, this yeah. has to do with yeah. making sure their engineer has operated. So there are no, two different things he agreed to is... No, he didn't, yeah. he didn't type it up. Oh, okay. And they're oh. huddling right back there. Oh, the other one is, that one is. You guys want to see this? <laughs> you want to see it, Joe? Yeah, it's a lot of dough on the. I didn't know you guys to print. Okay. print for that one. <laughs> That's cool. We're just emailing it real quick. Okay. I got to run to the restroom. Mr. Steinschneider? Yes. In the Florida Code, is it a 25 year storm that they have to protect, hold water for? <coughs> um. <laughs> I would ask Mr. Carey or Mr. Poon to confirm, but I believe it's a 25-year storm event that so if not requires design and. You have to come to the mic, I'm sorry. We have to record you. Donald Carey, Public Works. In an open basin, which is characteristic of this neighborhood, the SWIFT mode requires that uh, stormwater discharges not exceed in the post-development uh, in a 25-year design event that found in the pre-development case. So 25 year. 25 year. And in the and that's past. that's the flows. What's that? That's the flow, that's mm -hmm. not the volume. Okay. Um, if we did a 100 year event, would these people be much better protected or not as much because it's an open basin? They'd be better protected if you required a 100 year event. They'd be even more better protected, if I can say more better, mm -hmm. if it required that the discharge not just the flow, not exceed the pre-development case. This is a uh, very sluggish watershed. Water has trouble getting out of the, uh, the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. So exactly what would you recommend we do to protect them better? The 100-year event for stormwater events as well as for discharge? Yeah, the, the more that you require, the better protection that they will have. All right. But a, a basin but of special concern, for instance, it would it go even beyond what, what you've just mentioned? Correct. Okay. It's too small. So, it may not be. 
So let me ask you, when you when you do that, does that mean you're adding a lot more dirt going up higher to make the roads higher? Um, so if you make those, uh, if you require a more stringent drainage system, are you going to cause the roads to be raised? Is that what you're well, asking? Uh, our road standard right now is um, you build the road heights to 25-year flood event, right? Residential roads, uh, the level of service is set at a 10-year design event. A 10-year? Yes. Okay, so you're going to ask them to go to 100? No, I, I, I think um, I was what the commissioner so. was, was, was driving at was at, at what design storm are they required to make their post-development meet the pre-development rates? Not, not a question as to whether the, the road should be uh, so built to one level of service have, or don't not. They, don't they, by rule or law or whatever the word is, don't they have to not allow more water to come off their property than does now? The, in an open basin by the swift mud rules, in a 25-year design that has a 4% chance of occurring any given year, their rate of discharge, the flow, must not exceed in the post what is found in the pre. So isn't that what we're requiring them to do? That's that's the base minimum. That's the 25-year open basin requirement. Let me add something to that. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So to expand on that, in current planning, when we review plans, not only what Donald Kerry has said, but we also look at the 100-year storm event in regards to race and stages. So that is part of our consideration. So we, we make sure that's met, too, that doesn't exceed pre-development conditions also as part of our review. And typically, they design in accordance to that design storm event also. So, um, so just to add to you that we do look at we do look at the hundred year storm event and mm -hmm. and the stages and the rates also. Okay, in our review on in current planning, uh, you yeah. do. And if I could follow, okay. Mr. Chairman, you want to? So if I could follow, I yeah. believe our county attorney will will back up that we've done this before as far as putting a hundred year event uh, protection in for people in, you know previously known to be flooded areas. You know, I hate to interject, but I can save you a lot of time. If that's going to be the board's requirement, deny the MQD, yeah. and we'll go deal with what your legal requirements are. That isn't happening, all right. just with that's, all respect. You can save that's yourself some time. That is that's really, really mm -hmm. So as I, uh, Mr. Two likes to answer for me, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I say to you the trouble of having to give an opinion because it's irrelevant. We won't do it. Deny the MQD. What I had advised the commissioner before was that in a virgin land situation and at greenfield development, yes, you have in, in the past. Mm -hmm. You have not ever, to, since I've been county attorney, you've never done that with an entitled project. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Not the 100 here, but we've done 50. We've doubled it. No, not, oh. not. Not with an entitled project. Yeah, that's a taking, I think. Okay. You got a project that's already been approved. Okay. Um, I think that would be a lot. You might want to read that last U.S. Supreme Court decision that came down two okay. weeks ago, too, before you do that, Chairman. A couple yes, of questions. So, yeah. um, I would like to see it say, and I know our ordinance says that you know a lot of the residents only within 500 feet got noticed. So on this, it says Sierra Pine residents that spoke today. I'd like to see all the Sierra Pine residents be noticed, not just the ones that spoke today. Um, and Joel, one thing I did not hear you say, or if I did, I apologize. Are you going to have a community meeting yes. with yes, these sir. folks before moving? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. And just so you're aware, I checked with Height Design. Their mailing matrix reflects that, in fact, 85 people were sent notices for these hearings. So I can't say who's here and who's not. I understand. Yep. But the certified mailing matrix says 85 people were notified per the county code requirements. So I don't want the record to reflect that it's four or five people who raised their hand. I suggest we send the notice to, if someone has the mailing notice for the entire community, we're happy to send it to all. Otherwise, we have the county's notice of the, for the 85 people. The but we'll send it to everyone, but someone, someone has yeah, to provide us. Next door. Yeah, someone provides us that information. We have yeah. to send that notice. I'm sure we can get that to you. The only that. objection I have to draft uh, Mr. Stein Snyder's or Mr. Goldstein via Mr. Stein Snyder, uh, review, you've reviewed this for engineer client. We have no problem with the proposed modification to 61. We do respectfully think that 90 days is too long. If they're serious about getting an engineer, 
that needs to be a 30 or 45 day period. We, we, you know, while we're going through our first round with the county, they can get them to look at it before we get through the second round. We really need their input. If they want to engage in this, we welcome them, but they need, they need to get serious, hire the engineer and get him. He can look at these plans and in 30 days tell you what he thinks about them. Staff reuse them that quickly and they give you their opinions. So I don't know why we should extend that 90. I think 90 is too long. That's going to really slow us down. Good that's, like that's our only comment. 45. But yeah, so we can, we can live with a reasonable number. We're, otherwise, we're fine with exactly these terms. So Mr. Tu, I don't believe you had the opportunity for a rebuttal. Do you have anything? No, sir, I surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to keep. <laughs> I, I, I did a zoning hearing in Colorado last night, flew the red eye back to be here. I'm going on 36 hours, so I might get a little punchy <laughs> here pretty quick. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. So yes, it, it, it sounds like we're okay with the, um, yeah. everybody agrees to the one section when it came to the, the buffering that we spoke about from two homes. I don't have any objections from the commission or the applicant. We're not gonna, we're good. What? We're good on the buffering. What did they tell me that that was whatever he thinks, sir? <laughs> read it again. He read it out. I'm sorry. It's I was okay. trying to deal with you. The may have been in the you may have been huddling from another condition. <laughs> the the applicant agrees to provide additional buffering along the western boundary of the MPUD adjacent to the two existing homes as determined by the county administrator or designee at the time of PSP slash PDP approval. The applicant agrees to submit a buffering plan for the western boundary to the owners of the two existing homes for comments at least 60 days prior to the date of the PSP slash PDP approval. I think the same timing issue would be our concern there. Well, this is at least 60. It's giving you more time. Sorry, yeah. 45 days on both of those for them to review and get comments back. Are you lessening your time or are you? Well, you lessen the time. I think you're lessening your own time. Am I? No. That's what Moore says. No. I don't wait, know. Wait, wait, no. no. Your time. Well, no, oh, no you, he has to provide it at least 60 days prior to the yeah. time that the PSP is approved. So it's. It's the time that those two yeah. residents get it. So yeah, you're, it's we'd not, be lessening your time if what you yeah. were saying is saying at least 60. No, he's yeah. not lessening his job. See, I'm listening to him. And he's, he's wrong. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the time period that the residents have to have it before they can get a PSP approved. It's 45 days. Is, I'm is, oh, I in this one, 60 days. He, okay, he's asking for 45. Yeah, I'm, I'm requesting to match sync those up at a four. Yeah, I think 45. a 45 day review period is I'm fair. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that you know we, we basically have to wait 45 days and that's fine it's reasonable it's 15 days okay thank you motion uh so this is um, my district and um i'll make the motion to approve with all the new conditions well, the conditions set for that yeah um second commissioner moore second i said okay yeah as so stated, with the motion second. So, what are the conditions again? How much time? Is it 45 days? 45 days? Engineering and engineering. So, it's the new conditions as read, except inserting 45 days instead of 90 and 60. Is that what the motion is? Right. 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 That's okay. Correct. Didn't I say it like that? And, the, and you said revised conditions, but, but I want to make sure it's 45 because what was handed out to you is says 90 and then he read 60. So, it's, so it's right. 45 40. on both. It's okay. 45 right. on both. And, and for the record, the applicant agrees with those conditions. Okay. Right. So and I can't there, argue about them later. And there will be yeah. uh, a meeting with the residents. That's yeah, they'll take care of that. That's, right here. That's in the condition. <laughs> okay. I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion passed. So we can take 13. a break. Want to take a break while these people leave? Um, no. I'd rather move on, but that, that's just, it's up to you, Chairman. She's going to be quick. She, she's going to be quick.